Hi, everybody can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Ah, perfect. Yeah, it's always kind of uh hi Wendy, hi Mary, Scott. Hi. I don't know where I went. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I can see everybody on the screen. So if I don't see them on the screen, I assume that they're not on yet. I only see uh two members, Mayor. You and um, Susie and Connie's joining now. How do I go to the screen that has, I can see everybody. I'm not sure I'm not sure the screen chat. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor in the top right corner of your screen, it says view. If you click that and then click gallery. All right, there we go. Good job, Scott. <laughs> All right. Two years of teaching remote, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> the all in AD, you're a high tech guy. All right. So, uh, Susie. Connie. Uh, I could I just ask everyone uh, as we go through this meeting, I guess be a little bit patient and flexible because I think everyone like me trying to figure out how to do the, the Zoom thing, even though we use it many times. Folks, do we know where that background noise is coming from? <laughs> Dr. Hall, can you tell where the background noise is coming from? I can't tell um, when the meeting starts, so I generally mute everyone, Superintendent right. Skinner, so um, it'll only be the members that are uh, live, as well as you and uh, the mayor. Um, would you like the public speakers admitted now or wait until the motion that they're speaking for is up? Uh, they should be admitted now because it's a public meeting. I can't tell um, when the meeting starts, so I generally mute everyone, Superintendent Skinner, so um, it'll only be the members that are alive, as well as you and uh, the mayor. Um, would you like the public speakers admitted now or wait until the motion that they're speaking for is up? Uh, they should be admitted now because it's a public meeting. In the attacking third, and on attacking third. Break down the best of the yeah, inside. Well, um, when the meeting starts, so I generally mute everyone, Superintendent Skinner, so uh, it'll only be the members that are alive. As well. Having the love for tricking and some natural talent gives you a head start, but it's just the start. The real grind is what goes on behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, this is not a roll call, but I don't know. I can see all the uh, all the school committee members on line. I just want to see. Um, here's I see Connie. I see. Dominic, I see Jackie, I see Susie. Um, Stacy. Is Eileen on yet? Eileen. Eileen's not on yet. Okay. Mr. Superintendent, do we did you hear anything from Eileen? Is she joining us or He'll be here. He'll be here. Okay, we'll just wait one one more minute. So I left a gavel in the chamber, so I don't have a gavel uh, for the Zoom. So <laughs> the uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> All 
Okay, I think I think we we uh, so promise you. Yeah. I think might as well start, and uh, Eileen can uh, can join us when when she's on. So, Mr. Rossi just joined. Well, okay. Hi, Eileen. So we have to have everybody here. All right. Let's uh, if you can uh, unmute everybody, Jim. Uh, let's start the meeting. We'll start with a salute to the flag. Um, salute uh, anywhere you can from home. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag. United States of America, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Here. Mr. Lay? Here. Ms. Martin? Here. Ms. Thompson? Here. Mayor Chow? Here. Ms. Chun? Ms. Chun? Mr. Rossi. Here. Seven present. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And I want to welcome everyone who's joining us uh, on a Zoom meeting. Everyone's watching us uh, from home. I believe LTC is able to record us on Zoom and uh, put on TV uh, to watch us during the meeting as well. Uh, we do have... A... Recording in progress. Uh, we do have a, a long agenda um, to go uh, to go forward, but um, there's one item on the agenda that should be um, quickly, and there's a gentleman on Zoom that has another um, engagement to go to right after this meeting. So if um, it's on the Rule 53A, if we get a motion to suspend the rule by Ms. Mon to take item 9.4 um, out of order, second by Ms. Uh, Doherty, item 9.4, is the Lowell High School Athletic Rule 53 waiver request. Um, at this point, um, do we have the speaker on this to talk about this? You are seeing Mr. Scott Willett on Zoom. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I am here. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, briefly, just a little background on this um, rule and this waiver. The committee has really the final say. Uh, we've gone through the procedure to this point, and um, it will be, you know, the authority of the committee to to either agree or disagree with it. But the background is that um, many schools, including us, have uh, been forced to uh, allow some <clears throat> eighth grade participation in some of the athletics. We've used it um, several years now in ice hockey quite successfully. Uh, we've also used it in uh, tennis. Uh, for both the boys and the girls. So I uh, put this on there and the Merrimack Valley agreed and the MIAA and everything. Like I said, this is the last uh, step in the process. Um, this would be for the golf team, the uh, girls swim team, and it would be for girls soccer at the JV level. Last year, we were unable to fill a JV team. Um, so we're hoping in those three sports to backfill, if you will, the, the roster at, at the bottom of the roster with just a couple of kids. Um, and that would help us field full teams uh, in those sports, uh, so long as the committee would go along with it. But that's the general uh, basics of it. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Before I open uh, the floor to the to the members, uh, Mr. Superintendent, anything else to add on this matter? Thank you. It's a, obviously a specialty item related to sports and MIAA rules. Um, as as uh, Mr. Ouellette spoke, the school committee has, has a final decision making on it. And so I defer to the committee. Oh, thank you. Um, any comments or questions by any of the school committee members? So if you could uh, raise your hand and then I can do my best to recognize you on the screen. Um, I don't see any hands. I need a motion to approve Rule 53 with request by Ms. Mon, second by Mr. Lay. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. 
Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Seven yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Weller, for being here to speak on the program. We now will go back to where we left off on the agenda was uh, section three, special order of business. Uh, 3.1 is the introduction of interim chief school officers. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, uh, we do have a registered speaker here, so I'm going to allow the, the speaker here to save time, um, his time um, to go first. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the registered speaker. Stephen Perez. Hello. Oh. I, I don't no. think. Yeah. Mr. Perez, you're muted. You need to be unmuted. Okay. How's that? Better. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, may I begin? Yes. I'd like to start by saying that I work in a very competitive field. It often occurs that many of my coworkers are up for the same promotion. We know only one person will get it. We do our best, we congratulate the person who gets it, and we move on. We do not undercut each other. That is why speaking out in opposition of the promotion of Wendy Crocker Will Barge to position of interim chief school officer is counterintuitive thing for me to do. I also took the night off to work from be here because uh, it's that important. My name is Steve Perez. I've been a downtown Lowell resident for nearly 30 years. I'm a father of two teenagers who attend the Innovation Academy Charter School in Kingsborough. But if my kids attend IACS, why am I here today? I've been approached by a half dozen parents, which is closer to a dozen at this point, and teachers, former teachers from the Pine, asking me to speak out about my experience at the Pine School. One teacher who encouraged me to speak was afraid for their career if they told their story, so they chose to remain silent, but asked me to speak. I think it's unfortunate that advocating for children is a scary thing to do. My children were students at the Pine Art School, for the first two years, it was an okay experience. It was not the upgrade and special academic experience I was told it would be when we transferred from the Riley, uh, but it was fine. Most of the teachers were good teachers. It was perfectly adequate. Then my oldest daughter became quite ill. She spent a large chunk of seventh grade at Boston Children's Hospital. We arranged for a 504 disability plan with Ms. Crocker Robarge and Ms. Lang. The plan included sending homework to my daughter via Google Classroom, and sending a tutor to help her catch up on missed work. Neither of those things ever happened. I have email after email of me asking Ms. Crocker Robarge why my child was not being sent her work, and she would often not reply. Weeks passed and we heard nothing. Then I went to a parent teacher night at the school and my, my child's teachers all had the same questions. Where is your child? Why is she absent? It became clear that none of the teachers I had had any idea that they were supposed to be sending work to my daughter. Not one teacher knew that my child was sick. Not one teacher knew of this 504 plan. It's not just a dereliction of duty, it's illegal. At this meeting, it also came to light that my daughter, who among other conditions suffers from endometriosis, was told, quote, we all get painful periods, get back to class. Within weeks of that disgusting comment, my daughter was in an emergency surgery on her uterus. In order to try to right the ship, we requested a meeting with Ms. Crocker Robarge and guidance counselor Katie Pelton. When we arrived at the meeting, there was one person I did not recognize. One of them introduced themselves as a truancy professional. I found this perplexing. My child was not truant. At the meeting, Ms. Crocker Robarge said she had no idea my daughter was sick. This could most kindly be categorized as untrue. Ms. Crocker Robarge said my child's absences were unexcused and talked about my child repeating the seventh grade. I was astonished. This truancy person then accused me of giving our child school refusal syndrome, which explained, was explained to me as us conditioning our child to not want to go to school. My child was sick, Ms. Crocker Robarge knew it, and now somehow we were being told we had done something wrong as parents. But one must wonder why a straight A student who had faithfully gone to school for her entire academic life suddenly had school refusal syndrome. And why was our other daughter still in attendance every day if we were poisoning their minds against school? Blaming us and accusing us made no sense because it is not true. A short time after this meeting, I went to the office at the Pine and asked for a copy of the 504 plan. It was given to me and it was blank. Ms. Krakow-Rabarge never even filled it out. 
There were sections of this document, which I have, which were that were supposed to be signed by teachers and never was. The document was empty. Rather than have my daughter repeat seventh grade, we withdrew her from Lowell Public Schools and homeschooled her until we had found a home in Ajax. I was not gonna let this child repeat seventh grade. Ajax has been incredible where the pine fell short. If you're wondering how this child who was kept out of school by bad parents is doing today, she's attending Cornell University on a full scholarship and has received citations of merit from senators, the governor, and Representative Vanna Howard. Wendy Crocker Robarge gets zero credit for this. I want you to know that I filed a complaint with the State Board of Education who told me that because we withdrew, they could do nothing but that our case was compelling. I also hired a lawyer to send a demand letter to inform our intention to sue, but Christine O'Connor, the then solicitor, never replied. My lawyer felt we had an excellent case. However, with ongoing medical issues, we couldn't afford to sue because my wife had to quit her career to become a homeschool teacher. This situation devastated us financially. I know I'm, I'm up against my time, I'm almost done. I will close by saying that myself and many others steadfastly believe that Wendy Crocker Robards doesn't deserve this promotion. As one parent contacted me said, she can't get this job, she's a liability. I will also say of Mr. Liam Skinner, when one has a job with interim in the title, they are auditioning for the job. Because their body of work is small, every major decision they make will come under tremendous scrutiny. One of his first major decisions is to nominate a clearly divisive figure to be interim chief schools officer. You might have flown under the radar if you had picked almost anyone else. If you insist on doing this, you may be doing this to your own detriment. Also, next time Mr. Skinner can answer an email or a phone call, I wanted to do this in private, but I was forced to do this here in front of everyone because nobody ever replied to me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Perez, uh, for being here to speak on the, the matter. Madam Secretary, is there any other registered speaker? That concludes the speakers under special order of business. Thank you. Mr. Superintendent? Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I do want to acknowledge Mr. Perez's attendance and, and, and what he spoke about. Um, and, and I want to acknowledge that, that it is obviously and clearly very genuine and very heartfelt. And I have nothing to, to suggest that would refute anything that you've said, Mr. Perez. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm actually grateful that you mentioned at the end that I'm an interim superintendent, and I wholeheartedly agree that uh, that as interim, I am auditioning for uh, you know for, for, for the for the permanent roles, so to speak. Um, and I'm 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 aware of that. Um, I also am aware that this is a very big decision, um, and I have vetted this candidate. Ms. Crocker, um, more so than I have any other case in my career in terms of hiring. I have uh, referred back to superintendents as far back as Ms. Franco, Jean Franco, who was very supportive of Ms. Crocker, um, and, and I won't go through all of them, but each of the superintendents from Ms. Franco on forward um, has spoken very, very highly of Ms. Crocker's work. Ms. Crocker's own teachers uh, all, all teachers in Lowell at this point are offered an anonymous survey each year. Um, we call it a HAL survey. The results are available to people, to, to, to everyone in the public. Uh, one feature of that is a, um, a rating of the leadership of the school. And uh, I, I don't have all the results in front of me, but I assure you that I've reviewed them and they are um, extremely high. Uh, and this is ratings of her own teachers, of her um, uh abilities and, and, and her leadership at that school. I don't refute what Mr. Perez has said. I am, however, very confident in Ms. Crocker. Uh, Ms. Crocker has been working with us uh, for the last month or so and has uh, really done amazing work just in her first month alone. We will talk a little bit later in this meeting about Leadership Academy, which is a forum for principals uh, professional development. Ms. Crocker has taken a lead role in that and it has been phenomenally successful. She, among principals, is a uniquely popular choice. I, I, I don't refute you, uh, Mr. Perez. I just have no reason to, uh, to uh, it, it, as you mentioned, maybe in my own interest, it would be easier to pick a, a candidate who is not uh, you know, bringing you to this meeting, but I don't have good reason to do so, sir. Um, this has been a uniquely popular choice in, in terms of principals, um, and I believe also in terms of the general public, though I can acknowledge your concerns at the same time. Um, I want to go forward, please, and, and introduce to the committee uh, Ms. Crocker-Roberge, 
who has my full confidence and uh, whom I'm, I'm very grateful for her work throughout the summer uh, up to date. Uh, may, may I have Ms. Crocker, uh, Roberge, introduce Ms. yourself? Mr. Mayor, I think before that, I'm sorry to interrupt, um, interim, um, interim, super, interim superintendent. Um, I was just wondering if there are any members of the committee that would like to speak to Mr. Perez before that's done. Well, uh, well, well, we will allow that, Ms. Thompson. I'm going to have Ms. Robush introduce herself, and then once she's um, started speaking, then we can make comments and uh, questions after that. So through Mr. Superintendent, uh, Ms. Wendy Crocker Roberge, if you could introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, my name is Wendy Crocker Roberge. I've spent the last 12 years here in the Low Public Schools. Uh, serving as the principal of the Pine Arts Magnet School, and that has been the greatest privilege of my career um, to take that school from where we started to the incredible place that it is today uh, with a full complement mm -hmm. of arts instruction, um, a lot of innovative practices, and some pretty impressive results to support the work that has been done by a massive team of highly talented educators there. The opportunity to take this work and the innovation that I seek in as a progressive educator to a level that may impact the entire district moving forward is an exciting opportunity for the year ahead. So I thank you for it. Uh, wonderful. Um, I know that Stacy would like to make a comment after Stacy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Thompson goes. If the other members would like to raise your hand uh, first, so I can call and keep uh, as much order as possible. Miss Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, I'd just like to thank Mr. Perez. I know that um, your decision to come here was not made lightly. Um, I know that, you know, involving something that's very personal, which you shared um, about your daughter, was probably something that you battled with. But I thank you for doing that. Um, I do know that it's challenging to be the person on what people would consider the, the non-prevailing, I think this is the word that you used, side. Of, of a situation. Um, but again, to your point, there were many people, um, and, and this is not you know new information, there are many people that felt both ways about um, Ms. Crocker-Roberge. Um, I just wanna thank you for, for stepping out in the way that you did. I'm very glad to hear of your daughter's success. Um, and, and I know she'll, with parents like you, you all, um, behind her, she's going to be a thriving, continue to be a thriving success. So I just want to thank you. I know that it's challenging. Um, but again, also know, just know that you do have the support of people who um, are invested in, you know, every single citizen, every single person having a voice, um, regardless of whether it's a popular one. So um, I just want to personally thank you for, for sharing information that you didn't have to. Um, I'm getting like lots and lots of calls and texts right now as this is happening. So clearly it did make an impact. So thank you. Another member who wanted to speak, please raise your hands. Mr. Rossi. Yes, I'd also like to thank Mr. Perez for speaking out. I know this is a very sensitive issue for your daughter. Um, and I am so proud of how far she's come as a parent. I don't think any of us want to have to reach out about a sensitive issue like this. It is something that is very heart-wrenching, right? It's it's like, do I believe my daughter? Do I believe the doctors? Or am I believing a principal and attendance officer? You know, so medically there was an issue. Medically it was documented, but yet you weren't believed. And to me, as parents, as taxpayers, the children in the city of Lowell, I appreciate you speaking out because it is about our kids in the city of Lowell and, and what they're getting most of and that no matter what, we all need to feel validated. So thank you, Mr. Perez. Any other member, Mr. Lane? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Lido, I just want to say, Mr. Perez, that uh, thank you for coming out here at this meeting and speak about it. Uh, and congratulations with your daughter. Uh, she went to a great school. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, you as a parent uh, deserve all the credit for her success. And uh, um, I just have a short question whether 
why you uh, wait until this uh, late to uh, to come and speak? Uh, why didn't you come uh, earlier uh, when we had the, the meeting uh, in the chamber the other day, uh, a few weeks ago? Uh, so, but anyway, um, just want to say uh, good job uh, for for uh, for your your daughter going to a, a very uh, prestigious school. You're muted. Can I answer that question? I'm sure, Mr. Price. Um, I there's been a problem with the email system at City Hall, and I actually emailed to speak at the last session, and never heard back from anyone. And when I spoke to uh, Minerva, forgive me for using her first name. I don't remember her last name. Uh, she told me she received no email from me, but I had emailed three different times. And by the time she told me I could speak, the meeting had passed. So she told me to make sure I was here today. So I did I did what I could. And I thank you all. I appreciate your time. Any other member who would like to speak? Um, I don't see any other hands up. Um, I also thank you, Mr. Perez. Um, you're a valuable member of the community. Um, and you know, as we move the city and school district forward, we want everybody uh, to be part part of the progress, and we should not leave any any behind. Uh, yours and your family's um, experience um, have taught us the, the school district um, to to do better, um, to to make much more efforts to make sure that we include everybody. And we thank you for coming uh, tonight to speak on this matter. Thank you. I think everybody had the opportunity to speak. Uh, we don't need to take a vote on this. This will be taken up in the permission to intersection. Uh, with that, we now will move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is 3.2, the introduction of new principles, introduction of newly appointed principles. Um, I'm going to just have uh, Mr. Superintendent to introduce uh, these principles by names. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we feel very fortunate that uh, in, in law we're able to attract it the, the level of caliber <clears throat> candidates that we have to our principal positions. There are uh, it, it, people with, with great experience. We have a candidate who's come up to our ranks and has been promoted from an assistant principal. We have people uh, who have great experience outside of law but have uh, great ties to the community. So in no particular order, but uh, perhaps just in the order that I, I'm seeing them on my screen, um, uh, Ms. Huntley has been, Ms. Catherine Huntley has been chosen as the principal for the Lincoln School this year. Ms. Huntley has experience as a principal in Westford and uh, Situate, and we are delighted to have somebody of her great experience who's joining us for the Lincoln School principalship this year. Ms. Huntley, would you care to just make yourself known? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, it's really a privilege to join the Lowell Public Schools and to work under the leadership of Superintendent Skinner as the Lincoln Elementary School principal over the actually interim principal. So I'll make that quick clarification as well. Um, over the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to meet some of the district leaders and colleagues at the leadership training um, yesterday and today, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And I have to admit, I was absolutely delighted to learn that one of the district's commitments for learning time and space is to find joy in the work. Um, I speak often about balancing rigor and fun. I really believe in bringing that fun to a school for students, for staff, for families. And I think we can accomplish great things when, when we are really finding that joy. So. I feel certain that I'm in the right place. I'm so happy to have finally landed here. I actually followed my daughter <laughs> who's teaching in the district. So often it happens the other way. Daughters follow mothers or, uh, uh, but everything she's had to say and everything I've come to find in the district has really pleased me. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I look forward to the year ahead. Thank you, Ms. Huntley. Um, we also have with us uh, Jeff Haynes, who um, uh, is a, a, has been an assistant principal at the Bailey School, and we're thrilled to have the opportunity to sort of promote from within when we have such a fine candidate as Mr. Haynes in our midst. He stepped up this summer when we're looking for a principal at the Washington School, and I'm delighted to introduce him to you. Mr. Haynes? 
Hi, how are you? <clears throat> Good evening. Um, I am thrilled to be taking over the Washington School. Um, I'm totally looking forward to the opportunity to welcome families, uh, welcome back staff, and welcome back students to the Washington. Um, I've had the great opportunity to be the Bailey for the last nine years. Um, we've had a great opportunity to create an amazing culture of learners at the Bailey School, and I look to continue that um, at my time at the Washington. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. We also um, are hiring a new principal for the Pawtucketville Memorial School, and that person is Mr. Michael Monroe. Uh, I met Michael Monroe for the first time a couple of years ago when I was chief schools officer. He was highly rated for a couple of uh, principalships at that time, and uh, was I was delighted to see that he was a candidate <laughs> at this time, and we have chosen him to be the principal of the Pawtucket Memorial School. Mr. Monroe? Thank you, Superintendent Skinner. I, I'm beyond excited. I was persistent in my... Uh, my efforts to to land in Lowell. I spent the first 15-ish years of my career in the Boston Public Schools. I uh, started off as an AmeriCorps volunteer. I was placed at a school over in East Boston, the East Boston uh, part of a neighborhood of Boston. I was in the K school, K through eight. I became a teacher the following year, a school leader for six years after that. Most recently, a school leader up in Newburyport. Uh, I, I absolutely love what I do. I think as educators, we have the absolute best job in the world. And I'm honored. I feel honestly blessed uh, to be the new principal at Pawtuckville Memorial. I grew up in Haverhill, uh, where I currently live with my family, my twin boys, Charlie, Joey, my wife, Courtney, who is a math teacher at, at Whittier Tech. Uh, and although I'll always be a hilly, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm excited to become part Lowellian. I think I said that correctly, Lowellian. Uh, and I promise to always do my best in service to this city uh, and its students. And I want to personally just uh, say thank you for the, the the support and the welcoming personally to Superintendent Skinner, um, Wendy, Duroth, Dr. Hall, Matt McLean, the, the former uh, principal at Pawtucket, Dan Shanahan, the assistant principal at Pawtucket, uh, and everybody else has just been so gracious and, and uh, supportive in me transitioning into this new position. I'm very, very excited. Thank you. Ms. Monroe can consider himself lucky that our athletic director, uh, Scott Ouellette, has left the meeting at this point. But uh, you, could, you better be prepared when you come to our Thanksgiving football game. Uh, okay. So, so we, uh, one other hire who I'm very excited about is somebody I've been recruiting for a couple of years because he's been a standout principal of a middle school in Fitchburg. And his name is Matt Steinberg. I don't believe Mr. Steinberg was able to join this meeting tonight, but um, he is the new principal of the Wang School. Um, some of you may know the Steinberg name. He is part of a Steinberg family that hails from Lowell. He was looking for an opportunity to move back to town. And as I said, for the last couple of years, I've tracked his progress. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very fine hire. And I'm thrilled that he's agreed to come to us and be the Wang School principal. And one more, I would like you to uh, know about Laurie Lang, who is stepping up to be interim principal of the Pine Arts School now that uh, Ms. Crocker Roberge has moved up to central office. Ms. Lang is with us. She obviously is uh, from town and uh, is uh, renowned and respected as an assistant principal. And again, we're thrilled to bits that she has uh, taken the, the opportunity to step up into the principalship role this year at the Pine Arts School. Ms. Lang? Good evening, thank you, Liam, and thank you everyone for having us here. I'm, I'm super excited and humbled by being asked to step into some big shoes. Wendy crocker Roberge is an amazing principal and has been my sidekick for the last 11 years at Pine Art School, and we're, we're doing some really great things over there, so I'm excited to take the reins. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm humbled to serve both our staff, students, and the Pine Arts community, and I look forward to uh, this school year. So thank you very much for having me here tonight. That's it for our introductions. Um, thank you to the committee members for welcoming our new principals, our new leaders to, to their new positions. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Any comments or questions by any of the school committee members? Uh, I don't see any uh, hands up. I too want to uh, congratulate all of the new principals. Um, as uh, you have mentioned, uh, it is a blessing to be an educator. 
and they have the leadership role um, at the school. I'm sure all, all the teachers, the, the parents and the students, um, they're gonna um, welcome you with open arms and uh, you are a blessing to our school district, so uh, welcome. Uh, with that said, um, congratulations again, and we now move on to the next uh, section. Uh, just one more thing, I believe this, uh, before, I don't want this opportunity to go by. Uh, Ms. Hunt, you can take over the Lincoln School. Um, I know that's a great playground, it's going to be uh, in, in the works uh, pretty soon. So I look forward to be a uh, part of that development. Uh, the next section on the item is uh, the minutes. Um, the minutes are the, um, the special meeting of the Low School Committee of Wednesday, July 19, 2023. Uh, 4.2 approval minutes of the regularly scheduled Low School Committee meeting of Wednesday, July 19, 2023. Uh, the next one is a special meeting of the Low School Committee of Wednesday, July 26, 2023. And the last one is a special meeting of the Low School Committee of Wednesday, July 26, 2023. Any comments or questions by any of the school committee members? I don't see any hands up. Um, need a motion um, to. Motion to accept them all. So, taken all by Ms. Mon, second by uh, Ms. Doherty. On favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. Uh, the next line item is section five, permission to enter. 5.1, contract approval for interim chief school officer, Ms. Wendy crocker Robach. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, would you uh, lead us into this discussion? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I believe we also have uh, at least uh, some registered speakers on this item, and if they are in presence, I would suggest that we allow them to speak before we go forward. Madam Secretary, please call the registered speaker. Joey Sorota. Um, uh, Ms. Sorora, we're having a problem here with you, that audit issue. Um, I'm not sure if it's on your side, your computer side, or if it's um, on us, Mr. Hall. Maybe turn your volume up, Joy. Yeah. We are still not able to hear you, Ms. Sorota. You hear me now? You're muted You're again, muted. Joy. You're muted. We can hear you a little bit, Joy. Yeah, I, I think maybe if you get closer to the, the speaker of the device that you speak. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Um, I am just starting out. I'm actually a demonstrator assistant at the school, and I have worked with Wendy for the last 11 years. And I'm not usually a public speaker, but I want to take this opportunity to so felt it was important uh, to give her support to the hiring of the chief interim school oh, officer. I'm not sure if you have, I hear an echo. I'm not quite sure my two devices on at the same time. Mm -hmm. I just move on then. I'm sorry. I don't know how to fix this. So, Joy, do you, okay have, now, the, Joy? Joy, huh? do you have the meeting playing in your room? That's probably. No, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Sorry. So, what? I'm sorry. You could move on to the next person. I don't want to take too much time. Actually, I can hear her now. Yeah, I, I can hear you now, Joy. What are you doing? No, I can't hear you. Some can hear you, some cannot. Um, yes, she's, she's had a vision in the school, and I just have to say she's an amazing um, mentor, team player, leader, colleague, and friend. Her door is always been open to parents, staff, and anybody who wants to speak to her, even on personal issues. Um, she's built a strong um, involvement in the school, 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 school site council. And teacher teams, administrative teams, everybody's worked together quite um, soundly. Um, and so I have to say that the last class of 60 young adults, Lee McKay, were well rounded and confident from the years 
at the time. The rate of range of six miles per hour. We actually had 29 of the 60 students, I believe, the last class, were there from kindergarten on to the eighth grade. So um, I hope that you take this seriously and spread it when you talk real good. Is our new Edgewell school, Chief School Officer. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sorota. Um, we pick up only two or three words, uh, all good words. Uh, maybe if you could email um, Madam Secretary what you just said, so that way we can get it on, on the record as well. Okay. That might be better. Madam Secretary, the next speaker, please. Erin Hebert. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and school committee members. My name is Erin Hebert, and I'm speaking in support of the appointment of Wendy Crocker Robers as interim chief schools officer. This is a bittersweet moment. Wendy has been an incredible asset to our school as principal. And personally, I can truly say that my life would not be what it is had it not been for Wendy. I've been at the Pine for 10 years. While I was initially hired as a library aide, Wendy saw my potential to be something more, that I was meant to be in the classroom. Through her guidance, support, and gentle nudges, I became a paraprofessional, successfully completed my bachelor's degree, and was hired into my current role as sixth grade math and science teacher, and I'm about to complete my master's degree. I've never had a supervisor or mentor so invested in my personal growth as Wendy has been, but that guidance and support does not stop with me. Wendy saw the potential of what our school could be and what our students deserved. Through her passion, staff collaboration, and innovative thinking, we have truly lived up to our arts name. Beyond our core educational curriculum, our students have the opportunity to develop confidence and essential 21st century skills through our arts and project-based STEAM programming, such as fabric arts, 3D printing, instrumental music, and dance. These opportunities and experiences and more make the Pine a place where students and staff want to be. While it would be hard to fill her shoes as principal of the Pine, her knowledge, innovative leadership, and dedication will now benefit all students and families of Lowell. Thank you. Katie Pelton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the school committee. My name is Katie Pelton, and Monday I will begin my ninth year as the guidance counselor at the Pine Arts School. It is the greatest pleasure to express my support for Wendy Crocker Robers to be appointed to Chief Schools Officer for Lowell Public Schools. Working at the Pine has been a wonderful experience. I have learned and grown professionally from a student intern to the role I currently have, and I owe so much of my success to Mrs. Robers. I have had the privilege of working closely with Wendy for almost a decade, and I have witnessed firsthand her exceptional leadership qualities and dedication to education. She embodies integrity, compassion, and dedication to her staff and students. She is one of the greatest assets Lowell Public Schools employs, and each school in our district will benefit from her appointment. While principal of the Pine Arts, Mrs. Roberge consistently demonstrates an unwavering commitment to academic excellence, <laughs> student well-being, and fostering a positive and inclusive learning environment. She proves time and again to be an effective and transformative leader who has moved the Pine Arts to success. Mrs. Roberge leads by example at the Pine, fostering a culture of professionalism and collaboration. She proves mentorship and support to all who work in the building and all of Lowell Public Schools. One of Principal Roberge's greatest strengths is her visionary approach to education. It is Mrs. Roberge who has worked tirelessly incorporating extensive arts education for all students at the Pine. She poses a deep understanding of public education best practices, and successfully implements innovative programs that have positively impacted the academic growth and development of her students. While I will be incredibly sad not to have the pleasure of working with her each and every day, I wholeheartedly support her move to this new position and cannot think of anyone better equipped for the job. She will hold herself to the highest expectations and expect each and every one of us to do the same with her continued support and dedication. Thank you. Suzanne Cromwell. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor and School Committee members. Uh, my name is Suzanne Cromwell. I'm a Lowell resident, and my son um, has been a student at the Pine Arts since he was in kindergarten, and he is now entering fourth grade. And I am here to speak with um, with, with, I'm overjoyed to speak in um, favor of this, um, this 
wonderful position that has been offered to Ms. Crocker Roberge um, as Chief Schools Officer for Little Public Schools. Um, I we selected the Pine Arts Magnet School for their um, you know for their incredible arts curriculum um, and their just the the leadership that we that we saw there even before we had our son enrolled and we did our homework and we um, talked to other parents and uh, talked to other community members in Lowell and I have to say that my family and my son um, had not been and disappointed, we have absolutely um, found the school to be everything that we wanted it to be. And this is just a, a big testament to um, Principal Roberge's um, efforts and her championing the arts and what she has done there to transform that school and bring it to what it is today. I, I just see it in the students. I see it in the um, educators that are there. I see it in her administrative staff that she has just elevated everyone. Um, um, and it, it really is such an honor to be a part of that school community. Um, I serve on the PTO as well, and it has been such an honor to serve alongside um, Ms. Crocker-Roberge um, on the PTO as well. Um, I just am really thrilled. We will miss her. We will miss her um, at the Pine Arts community, and I'm just really thrilled about this new appointment, and I just went to wholeheartedly um, let the committee members know and the community know that myself, my son, and my husband, that my family are in full support for this appointment. And we just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you. Rebecca Stasevic. Good evening, Mayor Cho and the committee. Um, I'm here to speak as a Pine parent and as a mem member of the school site council. And um, I've spoken before about my support for um, Mrs. Robert's appointment as assistant superintendent. And I'm gonna reiterate that. But I will say today that um, I've known the Perez family longer than I've known Pine Arts. And uh, I'm gonna talk about my experience as a Pine parent, as a school site council member. Um, and none of this is meant to refute or dismiss anything that the Perez family has been through. Uh, Ms. Stosovic, uh, if I could interrupt, um, I'm not quite sure what um, you're going to say, but I just want to remind you that we are um, speaking on the um, approval of the school officer here. And it's not meant to refute um, uh, prior uh, speaker on a different matter. So I ask just to not, um, you know, refer back to the original the, the richer speaker before should be strictly uh, right now thank you right um so my point is that i've had a a great experience at the pine arts and um on many different levels and i'm gonna talk about some of the specifics one is that um as a parent i do have a child um with a specific medical issue and we have been received with uh, it's been received with a lot of help, uh, nothing but an encouragement and understanding and a complete willingness to explore what needs to be explored, answer all the questions and get on board to help. I've had nothing but help and understanding on that front from um, top to bottom with the staff there first. So that's been my experience. Um, my experience on the school site council with Ms. Roberge has been amazing. Um, I'm very privileged to serve there, and I've watched what's what Mrs. Robert have, has developed over time, which was absolutely no accident in creating the incredible programming that we have now. Um, so a lot of the skill that she employed in doing that, I think, is very specifically relevant to the position that of assistant superintendent, helping other principals realize their goals. She has a great way of recognizing talent and fostering that and um, encouraging it to the point where you're, you know, uh, staff and um, the school community will discover that they can do even more maybe than they thought. Um, she also, uh, in creating her vision for the school, was absolutely informed by her commitment to the arts, but I also 
know that watching this develop over time, it was always focused on benefiting the students and benefiting all the students, the EL students, the CSA students, the students who are struggling, the students who excel, and they were always at the center of creating this vision. So I don't have a doubt that there was ever a commitment to every student at the school. Um, I also watched her in her commitment to her vision for creating all of this at the Pine Arts, um, remain focused um, in a way that helped her be very resourceful, developing relationships um, and partnerships with the school and um, uh, you know, organizations that can help, that she knows will help, um, oh, and not just you know suddenly realizing, oh, we're going to need this. I better go find somebody who's going to help us with this. She would develop relationships over time with organizations so that when we needed something, they were already there and ready to help. Um, and I think this kind of skill and the ability to create the larger vision while considering the entire community and to leverage all the resources is the kind of thing that we want all our principals to be able to do. And I also think that she has a very clear understanding that every school is going to have their own set of needs and vision. And I think she's a great asset to helping all the principals be able to realize what they would like to see happen for their community. Thank you. Uh, you also have Ms. Stosovich. Uh, any other speaker, Madam Secretary? No, that concludes the speakers under 5.1. Before I open up the school committee members, uh, Mr. Superintendent, any, any comments, any uh, further introduction? No, thank you. Uh, the, the the item on the agenda that we're that we're uh, referring to is has to do with the contract approval for Ms. Crocker Roberge and uh, Dr. Hall is the person who is responsible for putting that contract together. Um, I believe using some uh, using the input of, of the committee. So I don't know if it's appropriate. Dr. Hall may uh, have a remark, or, or else we should move forward with that item. So, um, Dr. Hall, anything? Uh, uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, the temp the the typical template um, for uh, assistant superintendents was used uh, to draft this. Uh, the committee uh, did um, vote for some edits which were made, but this document represents uh, what the committee uh, offered for a contract. Right. Right. Any comments or questions by the school committee members? Please raise your hands so you can see them. Ms. Thompson? So I'm just wondering, not and, and this is part, potentially as an additional aside, but I would really love to have a full scope of what the, C, the CSO role is going to be um, and what it is. Um, historically, it's been one thing, but I would love to know the scope of what is being done or what the intention of being done is in this role. Thank you. Question to the CFO, Ms. Thompson. I'm sorry? Was it a question to? No, uh, no, no, no. It was just really wanting what that is, what what the current scope of uh, of uh, the responsibilities are. Um, if we could get that sent over, and I don't know if that's a I don't know if that's a Dr. Hall thing or I don't know who holds that. We'll start with uh, Mr. Superintendent. Sure, uh, Ms. Thompson, if it's okay with you, I'll take responsibility for responding to that in, in a couple of different ways. Um, one is uh, that I I'd like to as we go through the year report out to the committee about actual authentic work that's happening from central office and from central office figures, including uh, the, the, the CSO, CSO. And so an example of that on tonight's meeting uh, has to do with this Leadership Academy professional development that Ms. Crocker Roseberg has taken a, a, a big hand in, and she will report to you on that later on in this meeting. Uh, also on school opening. So that's not all of what Ms. Crock Roberts has been doing. By the way, she's been introduced, uh, she's been uh, recruiting and hiring all of the principal candidates who we met earlier in the meeting. Uh, the, the Leadership Academy I refer, I've referred to as well as school opening. These are not all the things she's been doing, but but I will, I'd will. i like to give you a, a written outline of, of the job description and an indication of, of what the work is, but also through this meeting and throughout the year, make regular updates from each of the cabinet members on the work that we're doing. Thank you.
Ms. Thompson, are you all set? Yeah, I mean, I think that's entirely fine. I would just, yeah. So if I could have what is being, what's being done historically, what you're intending, that'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other school committee members? Please raise your hands so I can see them. Mr. Lay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will I just want to let uh, you know that uh, I will continue my, uh, uh, my my no vote on this position. Um, I have nothing uh, against Ms. Uh, Wendy Robert, um, uh, but um, I will continue my, I will, I will but I, I think um, she will get the job anyway and congratulate to, uh, to you for getting this position. However, I will continue to, uh, to vote no on, on, on this and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, uh, working with you in the future. Any other committee members? I don't see any other hands up. Before I ask for a roll call, I just want to make a quick a comment. Um, uh, this uh, the appointment of Ms. Wilbush. Um, I have heard from so many different people, had a lengthy discussion both with uh, the residents and families and also with my colleagues and Mr. Superintendent. I believe Ms. Wilbush is very well uh, qualified and uh, is recommended by the superintendent um, as we um, went through with the, uh, with the selection uh, of new leadership in the school district. We want someone that is ready to go, that can provide stability, that can work with all the principals as well as with the, the entire school district. And I am in full uh, support of, of Ms. Wilbush for this position. I think she will do an excellent job as you hear from um, the people speak in favor. But um, as um, the, uh, my colleagues put before, but also listen to everybody. Um, not everybody can be happy with, with uh, the decisions. Uh, we do our best to make sure what's best for the district. Anything that we are lacking, um, you know, we, uh, we do on uh, the public, we do have our best interest and our commitment to make sure that we, we listen very hard to all your concerns and we will bring everyone, every family, every child uh, with us and make sure that the school district move forward together. Uh, with that said, uh, Madam Secretary, please roll call. I need a first and a second, please, Mayor. Motion uh, to approve of the interim chief schools officer, Wendy Crocker Robush, by. I, I'm, I'll make that motion. By, by Ms. Doherty, second by Ms. Martin. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Ms. Delay? No. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? I mean, you're muted. Sorry. I no, no. No. Five yeas, two nays. The motion passed. Congratulations, Ms. Wilburge. Um, uh, welcome. And I know you introduced yourself earlier. Would you like to say a, a few words? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Like I said, it's it's my privilege to um, join this the district ranks of uh, central office leadership and uh, this particular superintendent's cabinet. Um, Mr. Skinner and I have worked together for a very long time. We were often thought partners. Um, and like-minded leaders. And uh, I know that not every leadership decision that comes down our way is going to be something that 100% of people get on board with, um, but I, I do dot my I's, I do cross my T's. I'm very, very thorough in my work. And I am always happy to have any conversations with any individuals um, about any questions regarding myself, my work, my history, or my plans to bring a lot of, uh, uh, vision and high standards to the role of chief schools officer. So I will not disappoint you. Thank you. Well, again, uh, thank you. If you had a meeting in a chamber, you would hear the applause from the, the uh, from the school committee members. But again, congratulations. Um, with that said, we now move on to the next item, five point two, permission to enter August 16, two thousand twenty three. Any comments or questions on any of the items under the permission to enter? Ms. Martin? First, I'd ask if we could separate out the uh, CTI item. 
Okay. First by by Ms. Mon to separate the CTI item. Um, second by Mr. Lay on the face I post say not I saw portions carry. Um with that out of the way, um any comments on the other items, Ms. Mon or anybody else? I, I did have a question on um on the first page, the daily group. Could you tell me what that's paying for? Uh, Ms. Meyer, and that's for the um, location where the Dr. Janice Addy Day School um, is located. So is it is this just amending our regular? It, it, it's exercising an option year. Because my question would be where it's coming from the modular classroom rental budget line. I would believe that's a, a Scribner's error, but I'd have to defer to Ms. Turner on that. For Ms. Uh, Superintendent to Ms. Turner. Yes, Ms. Turner, please. Can you uh, refer to the, the daily group item on the permission to enter and help us understand uh, modular classroom rental that it's under? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm I'm confused by the question. What is the question? It's under the same line that it's been under for years. Um, the so daily Bill, group. Billy Joe, on, on the permission to enter document under daily group LLC, it says funding provided by school department budget uh, modular classroom rental. Oh, yeah, we've been historically charging it. To it, there's just one line called modular classroom, and I know, yeah, that does seem confusing. But anything that we're leasing, we charge to that line. I mean, we could make a a separate line for the um day, you know, the daily school group, which is um the you know the day um the Dan Janus eighty day school. We could make a separate line item for that, but. Right now, we've been historically using that line item. So do we charge central office to that line no. item? Yeah, we do all, both the central office and the Janice Day. Um, Janice Day I keep saying Janice Day, but yeah, Janice Day, um, Janice 80. I, you know what? I'm, I'm confused because I'm thinking of the Janice 80 when she was there at the um, central office. But yeah, both of those are charged to the same line item. They're both charged to that line item, but if you wanted to create another line item, we could. Okay, well, I, I'd probably say we can <clears throat> defer that maybe to a, a finance subcommittee. I, I do think that our light items should say what they are. Um, I mean, and particularly during a time when we're actually, I mean, we're in the process of purchasing modular classrooms where we'll be using that line item specifically it, it's certainly confusing. Absolutely. And for the last, um, you know, like when I in, when I started the job, I've been continuing to use these things. But this is part of what we've been doing the last couple of years is to try to clean up. And this is just another hint of a need to clean up this particular item. I have not noticed this myself, but this is something that we've been trying to do is clean up. And this would be this will be added to my list to clean up and improve the chart of accounts. So that's, I'll that's add that. And I'll make sure. Even if we just use the same account number and just call it leases, you know, like the you know, like the central office leases, mm -hmm. even that, like these are the type of things that drive me crazy. So I, I applaud the fact that you pointed out another one, you know, because I find them all the time and it drives me crazy. So I'll, I'll just either ask the um, city hall to change it to central office leases. If the coding is, um, remin you know, like reflects leases. If not, we'll add another account to make sure that we don't um, continue making this um confusion okay okay thank you no problem so miss miss molly you okay to vote on this item and then um miss turner will deal with the city hall on that matter um any other comments or questions on a permission to enter 
So what we'll do is we'll do a roll call on um, all the items, uh, excluding a CTI item, and then we'll do another uh, roll call vote um, for the CTI items. Uh, Madam Secretary, please do the first uh, roll call on the vote uh, together, excluding the CTI items. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may, may I ask? So we okay with um, Ms. Mana, we okay with the um, the daily group as it is now? No. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's a it's a the rental cost that we you know for a building that we've been using for a number of years now. Okay. So I'm fine with that. If we can work out the kind of line item stuff afterwards, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. By Ms. Doherty and second by Mr. Rossi, Madam Secretary. Ms. Doherty. Yes. Mr. Leg. Yes. Ms. Martin. Yes. Ms. Thompson. Yes. Mayor Chow. Mia Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Seven yeas approved. Okay. Uh, the next motion is on a seat item on the commission enter. Uh, motion by Ms. Chun, second by Mr. Rossi. Madam Secretary, um, any comments or questions before I do the roll call? Uh, hearing none, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mia Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Ms. Rossi. Yes. Six shades, one absent. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, following items are the motions by the school committee members. Uh, we'll start with 6.1. Is a motion by Mr. Rossi, request superintendent to post new health and physical education curriculum on all parents' website and have questions and answer sessions for a variety of cases. Second by Mr. Lay, Mr. Rossi. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I'm not sure if everyone is aware um, that the health curriculum and physical health standards have finally changed according to the state and with the new governor for the first time in about 25 years. And where there are some really great points that I love in the whole curriculum draft, there are some areas of contention that I I have heard from parents with various religions and they would like consent to opt out of their child's learning certain subjects um, or certain areas in the curriculum, especially pre-K through two and then three to five. So I would just like for the low public schools to make this available, this draft curriculum available on the low public schools website and as well as make a clear comment section that I believe parents are able to comment on their thoughts until August 28th on the curriculum and what they think. But I also think it's important for low public schools to think about a way for students to opt out of certain areas that may they may not want their child exposed to at a very young developmental age at the same time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions by uh, other members? Ms. Doherty? Uh, thank you. Uh, and I, I don't have an objection with this motion. I think I just want to remind the committee that uh, we're in the process of revamping our own programming. Obviously, we take guidance from the state, but we also are going to develop our own program uh, because we have been so behind and we were trying to get something at the middle school level, as I know Ms. Desmond has been spearheading that issue, getting a task force of our, our health teachers. Now every middle school has a health teacher certified mm -hmm. as a health teacher. So I, I just would like to be able to remind everybody we're working um on this issue, and I would be expecting some sort of curriculum meeting subcommittee at some point when Ms. Desmond's team is ready to, to share that with us. But I just see that as a, an addition to uh, what Ms. Del Rossi is asking here is really looking at what the state has put together, if I understand her correctly. Uh, so I'm not against that, but we are also spearheading uh, to do a lot more than we've ever done. And I would ho hope by having certified health teachers in every middle school, we are going to be able to make some significant progress in this area. But I'm not against um, 
you know, providing the information that the state's putting out there. Although I do see that as more, if people have questions or concerns about the state uh, requirements, wouldn't that be better going through the state? Um, I, I, that's just a question. Thanks. Okay. Can I come back? Mr. Walsh? Yes. So our, regardless, our own local Lowell low health curriculum is going to have to come from the state of Massachusetts curriculum. And there's many areas within that state curriculum. It is still in draft form. So I think it's important for Lowell Public Schools to publicize it and allow the parent feedback section to be posted as well. So parents can give their feedback to the state about it because they're giving that option. And then Lowell will do whatever they want to do with it. But I believe there needs to be consents in order for students to opt out of certain areas because some are not so developmentally appropriate for students at certain ages or not so, um, uh, there's a lot of cultures that don't, do not, are not ready for their children to learn about certain things just yet. Um, so I, I think that it's just important for parents in the city to be able to give the state their opinion because the state has given them that option and then Lowell can do whatever they want from there. But thank you. Any other comments or questions? There are none. All in favor say aye. Paul say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next motion is also by Mr. Rossi. Request superintendent to report on protocol of student on Protocol of Student on Student Bullying Report, second by Ms. Thompson. I believe we have a registered speaker. Madam Secretary, please call the speaker. Marie Perez. Good evening. My name is Maria Perez, and I live at 144 Hampshire Street in Lowell. I'm here today in front of all of you to address concerns I have with bullying in the Lowell Public Schools. My nine-year-old child is a victim of bullying and physical assault at his school, and nothing was done to properly address the situation. Bullying is an emer um, emerging serious problem in schools, resulting in physical and emotional problems in children. My nine-year-old child was physically assaulted twice by two different classmates. The first assault happened on 214, 2023 by a classmate whose mother is also a staff at the school. The classmate punched my son so hard in the stomach that it took my son's breath away. Afterwards, my son had severe stomach pains that I had to take him to the emergency room. The second assault happened inside my child's classroom by a different classmate. The classmate repeatedly slapped my child on the back of his head four to five times to the point that my son has severe headaches for several days. The next day I called the police to file an incident report of what occurred. These are not minor issues, but rather reoccurrences of physical attacks on my child. After the first attack, when my son got home, he threw himself on the floor crying out of frustration because he was being bullied and assaulted for no reason. The, prince, the principal was notified of the incident and did not properly handle the situation. I had to go down to the school department in hopes they were able to help me. But all I got was, quote, if it's that bad at his school, then change him to a different school. If this is the way the school department handles situations, then I think everyone should be properly trained or fired. Because of what occurred with my son at school, my child no longer feels safe. There has to be some change. Children are supposed to be are supposed to feel safe at school. Also, there was no separation in policy for my child and the child that assaulted my son, which increases anxiety. Needing and he needed counseling. There was a lack of confi confidentiality that I witnessed firsthand. Sorry, I got. Um, 
Sorry, I just I have it all written down. More needs to uh, so my closing statement is that more needs I demand more to be done, not only for my child, but for all those children who are being bullied at the low public schools. If you don't fix the problem, then you condone it. There's no other, there's no other word for this. This is it's getting ridiculous. I'm very, I'm sad for my child. I'm frustrated because every time I ask for help, nobody's helping me. So I do demand something be done. Thank you. Mr. Rossi. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Perez, for speaking out. I know how difficult it is um, to see a child act out and for them maybe not to really even be able to verbalize what what's happening in this situation. Um, in many instances, in cases of bullying, it's I've heard of, you know, in my own son's situation, and he attends a great school, it's well, what did you do? What you do to cause that? Um, I just I've talked of this before that children need to know what bullying actually is, what it looks like. Um, our students at the very elementary level. I know we had this great presentation with Project Learn, maybe something to that effect, and even staff in their responses to how they are responding, especially to parents, especially when a, a parent is bringing a student to the hospital. I mean, my own child was spit on earlier in the school year and I refused to send him to school in, until we had a meeting. And that wasn't documented correctly in, in the system and, until I, I demanded it because I was kind of done with it all. Um, there, there's a lot that's going on in regards to bullying and things that are not being documented correctly in our system. And I would like to see what we can do to do something to make that change a lot, especially in these districts over in Seneville, in the downtown area, schools like the Merkland. It, these are underserved areas that really need a lot of attention and and they're really not getting them. And our kids are suffering. And a parent's worst nightmare is for their kid to not ever want to go to school. I hear my son say, I'm so happy to never go back to that school again. And it breaks my heart because he loved that school, you know, and it, it's just what's happening. And we need to nurture our children and we're not nurturing our children and making them feel safe. So I, I really would like to push for professional development in terms of bullying and nurturing for administrative staff and in some way student on student lessons. Um, if I could push for, for that in some type of emotion to move forward because it's all changed today and it's sneaky and it's in times when kids are in line when they're not in front of teachers. And so sometimes it's not always in front of a teacher's face that a teacher can report on it. But then what do we do? We need more training on that for our staff in terms of that. And what can we do in terms of that? So if I could put a motion forth on the floor to do um, training on bullying for staff and, and for student on student, I would appreciate uh, Mr. Rossi, uh, we're going to take a, a vote on your motion now, and all your comments and your concerns are being noted by the secretary. Um, I ask that the superintendent um, of the administration, uh, as part of the protocol, to include uh, what Mr. Rossi just requested in terms of uh, professional training, um, so that we uh, encompass report and protocol when it comes back to the school committee, when the motion response comes back. Would that be okay with you, Mr. Rossi? Yes, yes. Mr. Mayor, if if, if I may, uh, 
uh, Mr. Rossi has another motion that also includes professional development that I wanted to, just to point that out. I want to say to Mr. Rossi that um, she's given us an opportunity to to to, uh, to to respond, and I welcome that. And and so I we, I, I think bullying is a serious issue, um, and I, I take your comments very seriously. We'll, we'll be assuming the motion passes. We'll be happy to report back to you in um, in a thorough fashion. Thank you. We'll ask you two hands up, Ms. Thompson, and then Mr. Lee. Ms. Thompson. Um, thank you, Ms. Darasi, for this motion. As everybody knows, um, one of the things that um, I'm probably most proud of is the dashboard. But the problem is, is that um, it has been relayed to me that there are ways that people go around the dashboard. Um, and so, for example, if a principal did not want um, to fill it out, they don't have to. They can kind of try to handle something in-house. But that does not allow for us to, to get or capture accurate full records. Um, and so to, to your point about the training, I think there needs to be an accountability piece towards making sure that everything is, um, you know, is handled in the way that it was intentioned. Yes, it may take longer time. Yes, it may be more. But the point of that is for us to capture accurately what is happening in each school. Um, it can't be that you know, people in, in administration are worried about what the school looks like as far as the statistics, because again, it really is about the numbers and us getting to the root of it. Because at the end of it, I'm pretty sure all of my colleagues don't wanna just keep getting the reports of the numbers. We wanna make sure that we're getting to the root of what the issue is. Why is bullying prevailing in the way that it is? Um, and again, we did have on the dashboard, um, we did have a few staff on student situations. So um, we really may, need to get to the, to what, what is being recorded, is it being accurately recorded, and then what is the process? Um, and I think trans, as far as transparency, there needs to be a specific process that is written out that everybody knows this is what to expect. If my child is bullied, this is what is done. If my, um, if my child is bullied by a, a student, this is what is done. If my child is bullied by staff, this is what is done. Um, and I get people are like, well, you can't do certain things because of privacy rights and all that. We need to figure it out because these numbers have been upticking since the dashboard went into inception. And so for me, really important. I appreciate Ms. Del Rossi coming um, with this motion. Um, I'm clearly very passionate about it because it goes into lots of things, not just physical, but you're talking about emotional, psychological um, you're talking about racism, discrimination issues that all get wrapped up into this bullying um, kind of title or area. And we have to take a real stand on it and not just keep talking about it. So I appreciate your motion, Ms. Del Rossi. Thank you. Can, can I, Ms. can Del I just, I'm one gonna more. Go first and then I'm going to uh, go back to you, Mr. May, opportunity to speak also. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to uh, echo what Ms. Thompson just said. Uh, and, and more. Uh, good job, uh, uh, Mr. Rossi, for uh, attacking this uh, topic of uh, bullying. Uh, it is important. I support you with, uh, with this motion and the motion, uh, the next motion uh, about bullying. Um, uh, and may I also ask, uh, when you mentioned about training, could you modify this motion, just including training? I mean, just put the word and training. Uh, maybe that's uh, uh, an, an easy way to, uh, uh, to, to put that subject in. And training, but, but I think that it has to be kind of specified as to how administrators are. Sure. Which, whichever, that, that's fine. If you want to keep it separately, it's fine. I support your motion. So thank you. thank you. But I, another point I also wanted to, to bring up is getting a, a phone call about what happened also is important. Uh, my son has processing issues. So a lot of times he'll come home from school and, and he'll be in a really awful mood and I can't figure out what's going on. He said his day at school was fine, but later on when we're going to bed, he'll tell me what happened on the recess or when he was spit on in school and he did go and report it to somebody, but somebody forgot to report it to a principal or this or that. There's a lot of things that parents aren't getting told about immediately. And for our youth, we need to know, especially in today's society. So those phone calls are really important, that communication, because some of us have children with higher levels of need that 
that need to talk about that right away and 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 really process that and let instead of letting it fester. Thank you. Um, normally, we don't have the uh, Russian speaker speak again, but uh, this is an important topic. I'm going to have the Russian speaker go one more time, Ms. Perez. Did you have your hands up, Ms. Perez? Sorry. Um, my Nobody reported uh, that my son got hit or anything. It was, I noticed my son, because I know how my son is. He's a happy kid, but when he was at dismissal, which he's a walker. Um, I, I noticed he was sad. And then when he left, he started bawling, saying that that kid punched him in the stomach really hard. And that he was afraid to tell the teacher because there was other situations going on and that he was afraid that he gets yelled at. And my son right now is not, is not mentally well. And I feel bad because school's starting and he just, and I wish they would have reported to me but the teacher said she wasn't aware because the kids were lined up outside the classroom and I don't know where she went. And she said she wasn't aware and that would yell never, oops, I said my son's name, I'm sorry about that. Um, that, that she didn't, uh, she wasn't aware. And uh, from what I heard, the, the kid that assaulted my son said that he just pushed him hard. It was not a punch. But then when he went to the hospital, they said that he had internal bruising in his stomach. And I wish they would have just told me, like, at least because Uriel was not fine the rest of the day after that happened. And I don't know how the teacher did not notice anything. And then the second incident, my, it happened in the classroom when my son was slapped behind his head. How can you not? The teacher did not hear that. How can you not hear a kid being slapped? And again, and the teacher did not know, and my son was, um, during dismissal was when he told me again. And after that, his attendance went down because he did not want to go to school. It was always an issue. He would cry, and I was told by the counselor that if he doesn't go to school, he, she might have to call DCF on me because of my son, but I'm not going to send him to an environment that he does not feel safe. Thank you, Ms. Perez. Um, any other um members would like to speak. Um, I see your hands up again, Mr. Rossi. Um, just in the interest of time, um, you, I, uh, your points are well taken. Before I do the, the voice work, I just want to add a quick comment to that. Um, I want to thank Ms. Perez, um, uh, very courageous to speak um, on, on your son's um, experience. And thank you, Ms. Rossi, for making a motion. Um, Ms. Thompson, Mr. Lay, and um, I, I feel that all my colleagues feel it. Um, you know, bullying, I, I get, it's tough enough for, for a child um, to go to school. It's a brand new world to them to learn everything new, but uh, to feel uh, unsafe in the education environment. Um, you know, my heart breaks it leads to a lot of issues as a speaker and many of my colleagues mentioned uh, to mental issues and God forbid uh, worse every time I hear of a young person uh, losing their, their lives or just get worse um, uh, mentally because it's not just physical pain, it's just mental, it's everything else. Uh, my, my heart just breaks. So if this is a very important uh, motion, and I, I um, have confidence that the school administration uh, listen to all the comments and requests, and will take up these uh, issues uh, as serious as possible. Uh, with that said, um, all those in, in favor say aye. Opposed, opposed say no, the ayes have it. This motion is carried. Thank you. Can I just state for it to be for teachers to enhance have enhanced training on student on student bullying, just so it's clarified for the record. Uh, absolutely. If that's okay, that the, the members took a vote already. If it's okay to uh, have the same vote reflecting what on Mr. Ross has mentioned, if Madam Secretary could. No, I, you would need a new second for this, Mayor Chow. Uh Okay. Uh, if I could just ask, isn't that in her second motion that we haven't gotten to yet? We're, we're talking about professional development at 6.3. Yes, I mean, that's a good point too. Mr. Rossi, would that be okay to take up the next motion? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I, I had to I had to feed my dog. <laughs> I, I think we're all on the same page. Um, I, I think we support uh, this motion and the meaning of it and the things surrounding all, all bullying in our uh, school district. Uh, it doesn't have to be specifically uh, what my colleague and the make of the motion 
stated, but everything that's related to the bowling should be reflected in the report coming back, including the professional development, which uh, we're going to take up on. So the next motion is 6.3. It's also a motion by Mr. Rossi. Request staff on student bullying reports as identified on the dashboard and have administrators have professional development day in order to best handle students on academic and social individual education plans as to know as to not overwhelm a student, second by Ms. Martin. Mr. Rossi. Yes, and, and this has a great deal to do with Ms. Martin's um, dashboard where we see staff on student bullying. And so I guess um, this has to do with students who maybe are English language learners who have processing, who have individual education plans. And what is the best way for a administrator to go about asking a student about whether he was the aggressor bullying or what happened in a bullying situation um, that he was the victim of. Uh, there's a lot of students that just will shut down and not talk and will just feel like everything is their fault. And I think a lot of things from what I've witnessed gets bl blanketed and it treats students in a way that it becomes an interrogation. Um, so I would like for there to also be staff on student bullying and for staff to be more aware of how to approach students who are maybe showing aggression or showing signs of victimization um, because this is becoming a bigger and bigger issue every year. Okay, you all set. Mr. Rossi, any other comments or questions by any of the committee members? Ms. Thompson? I just think I would like to add that um, the training that you're talking about here, um, I think that it should be external because I think every single person in the district should be able to sit and kind of take in information as opposed to somebody taking away time from what their task is in um, doing this. Even if, and I get there are probably qualified people within the district, but I think that there's a time and a place to have everybody sit back and have somebody that is external that doesn't, um, you know, that doesn't have any knowledge of potentially what's happening, but can kind of cover a multitude of, of things that, that are going on. That's all I want to add. There was a request to, to amendment or to add to the, the motion, Ms. Thompson? Yes. yes. Would it be acceptable by you, Mr. Rossi? Yes. Okay, motion amended, it's noted. Any other comments or questions? Um, hearing none, all in favor say aye, both say no, the ayes have it, motion's carry. The next motion is 6.4, it's also by Mr. Rossi. Request superintendent to report on the number of cases of student litigation in terms of staff on student cases so that we can get put a corrective action plans together and reduce litigation. Second by Mr. Lay, Mr. Rossi. Yes, and, and yet again, this has more to do with the staff, with the um, dashboard also, what we're seeing on staff on student situations and litigation that's being brought to the district. I, I think that we need to be hyper aware of everything that's going on. I mean, as, as I think we are a very aware society, we're a very aware school district because we have to be, but there are still situations going on that are bringing litigation to the city due to how things are being handled with with students. And I think that needs to be every, even from custodians to security guards and so forth, because we need a protocol to say, this is how this situation was referred to. And this, this is the protocols and this person was restrained. And even if it's a, a security guard who had to restrain a student, you know, we we need guidelines to say we have these protocols, this staff member followed these protocols, and this is it because we need to protect ourselves, we need to protect our city, we need to protect our kids overall. Mr. Mayor, is it appropriate for me to make a comment? Absolutely, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rossi and committee members, I thought I should mention that um, 
ahead of the meeting, I made an inquiry because it, I was curious about this motion. And to my knowledge, there's I, there's no litigation of this sort not, and, uh, that we need to get a formal answer from the city solicitor because it's possible that cases have gone to the city solicitor that I'm unaware of. So I'm happy to follow up on this motion. But um, I, I, I'm saying this in part because if we were to report back that there are no such cases, uh, that, that seems right now that, that that's possible. And so I want Ms. Del Rossi to uh, be able to, um, if, if there's specifics to or specific cases or specific worries that you have, I'll run down each and every one of them. But I doubt that there's a litigation per se. Well, uh, all right. I mean... Maybe it hasn't become formal yet, but I've been informed of them from parents. So that this is where my motion came from. So, okay. If if there are specific cases, please bring them forward to me. I I, I promise to deal with each and every one. Uh, but but my my biggest worry right now is that if you're aware of cases that I'm not aware of, we may not be dealing with them simply because we don't know of them. Uh, pl please bring them forward, and and we'll be happy to process them. I have emailed you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions by other committee members? I don't see any hands up. All in favor say aye. I both say no. The ayes have it. Motion's carried. The next motion is also by Ms. De Rossi, 6.5. Request superintendent to increase the number for school resource officers within middle schools. Second by Ms. Doherty. Mr. Rossi. Yes, we, we get a number of the reports from the superintendent on a daily basis, and the majority are middle school students that are being transported to hospitals for mental health reasons. I think if there was a middle school officer within a middle school resource officer within these buildings that got to know the kids, that got to talk to them, that they had an outside outlet, maybe not school personnel. Maybe this could put a decrease in into those mental health calls and sending students out. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening in schools today. Kids are bringing vapes to school, knives, guns. So I I just think that it's just safer um, to ensure that our middle school starting off um, is is more secure um, and for a variety of reasons. Maybe a student doesn't feel comfortable talking to staff support, but maybe they feel comfortable talking to school support. Or, I mean, to a SRO, a, a student resource officer. Any other comments or questions by any of the committee members? I don't see any hands up. On favor say aye, of course say no, I have it. Motion is carried. And that completes the section on Mr. Rossi's motions. <laughs> Thank you. We'll start the next section with a new motion by Ms. Thompson, item 6.6, .6, motion to receive a 90 days report from the interim superintendent to include his district priorities, a list of goals and organizational concerns prior in the next school committee meeting, second by Ms. Martin, Ms. Thompson. Yes, I mean, I think that this is, um, it really kind of speaks for itself. I, I know that there were some um, some things that we're going to probably talk about a little bit later, according to an entry plan and goals, um, and I'll kind of speak to it then. But my, my hope was to find out literally the 90-day plan as opposed to like general um, information. So, but we will talk about it more when Mr. Skinner goes over his, uh, his entry plan and his goals. Wonderful. Any other comments or questions by any of the members? I don't see any hands up on the favors of I opposed say no, the ayes have it, motions carry. The next motion is item 6.7, a motion by Ms. Thompson, motion to poll members of the equity subcommittee and schedule a meeting for the purposes of pausing this aggregated data surrounding already specified areas, uh, and colon, one dropout rates, failure rates, attendance rates, and Hispanic slash Latinx support needs with the specific district commitments, second by Ms. DeRossi, Ms. Thompson. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, we have we need an equity subcommittee meeting. There's been lots of, you know, asks um, in the last few months and we've kind of gone this way and that way and there's been a lot of things happening. Um, but the disaggregated data was really 
um, something that as chief uh, chief uh, chief schools officer, Mr. Skinner has had was be, was working on um, kind of the dropout rate, failure rates, attendance rates, and all of that. And then I was really looking forward to in this uh, meeting specific date district commitments. Um, so not just like I'm going to meet with this group or that group, but like literally specific commitments that the district um, is ready to roll out. Well, so this will be discussed per motion in the equity subcommittee. Right. Um, we'll discuss uh, doing them. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next motion is item 6.8, a motion by Ms. Mon to request the administration develop a proposed remote work slash hybrid schedule policy to be presented to the policy subcommittee. Second by Ms. Chun. Ms. Mon. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, really just hoping that the administration can come up with a, a comprehensive policy so that they're, um, you know, across, I think this impacts central more than certainly our school sites where people are required to be on site all the time, um, but that we have a, an actual policy in place that we can point to so that there is some um, consistency uh, across central where, um, you know, people are, have, you know, they can understand what's what's appropriate, what they can ask for, um, and then the the district can make decisions as to what's best for the work being done um, at central office. Are the comments or questions by any of the members? I don't see any hands up. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. That completes all the motion uh, for this meeting. The next um, section is on subcommittees and. Line item 7.1 is the Human Resources and Labor Relations Subcommittee, and uh, the chairperson is Ms. Mon. Any report, Ms. Mon? I already presented this report, uh, Mr. Mayor, at our last meeting, uh, so this is just uh, an approval of the written minutes, Wonderful. which uh, I would submit for, for consideration. No additional uh, comments or, or question at this point. The motion uh, to accept this report is a point of progress by Ms. Doherty, second by Mr. Lay. On the favor say aye, Paul say no, the ayes have it, motion is carried. The next section on the agenda is section <laughs> item number eight, reports of the superintendent. We'll start with 8.1, the superintendent's entry and transition. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Mayor and, and school committee members, um, I'm, I'm uh, delighted to have the opportunity to present this to you. It's, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't suppose it's going to be helpful for me to, to to speak through all of what I've already given to you in, in written form, but uh, I might remark that uh, I began with a very different type of entry plan and goals uh, and, and submitted them first to my coach. I'm not sure if I've mentioned before, but new superintendents now have a coach from the new superintendent's induction program. My coach is a woman called uh, Meg Mayo Brown, a former superintendent in Fall River and in Barnstable. And so she worked over the document that I first produced and she guided me to follow uh, for, for the entry plan. Um, the, there's a new superintendent's induction program rubric. And so the plan in front of you that the entry plan follows that rubric. Um, I might've written it differently otherwise, but it calls for items like data sources, data analysis, and so forth. And that is why it is formatted the way that it is. I, I am happy to consider it to be a draft. And uh, particularly in light of what Ms. Thompson uh, uh, spoke about, I'm happy to consider it a draft and make some revisions if you'd see that as appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. And uh, thank you for alluding. The next item is, is the goals, what you mentioned already, and you see in the written form. I'm not quite sure you want to add anything else. Um, any comments or questions by any of the school committee members on both 8.1 and 8.2? Mr. P Ms. Thompson? Gee, I feel like I'm talking a lot today. I'll try to make this uh, as quick as possible. Um, so obviously I kind of alluded to the, the to the point or to the desire to have something more um, specific to the 90 days. A lot of um, you, you gave good narrative about kind of what you were um, thinking about as far as your entry plan and your goals. Um, but something for me, I was looking for something more measurable, um, something, and you kind of just alluded to that, um, something like of more of a rubric style 
um, would be helpful, even though that she told you to go the opposite direction. I think that something that had more of that would be a little bit helpful for just for us to be able to, because that, you know, at the end of the day, there's an important portion of what we do, which is kind of being able to evaluate, you know, how things are going. So I think that that would be great. And it also helps for us to support the work that's being done. Um, one of the things that I noted in your entry plan, so I'm going to talk about your entry plan first and then um, quickly about the goals. So the entry plan and the core beliefs was curious about there being something about staff support in that section, because I know that you've spoken about that. And I noted that it's not one of the things that was kind of spelled out specifically. So if you could kind of speak towards um, or as you're going back, because I know you said this is going to be a draft if you can speak towards, you know, the staff support as one of your core beliefs as well, um, because the other ones are really, really solid. Thank uh, you. Um, thank you. So uh, the um, I'm, I'm trying to, to trying to consider how, how to respond. The, the when I first sent my draft to this coach, mm -hmm. I included mm -hmm. everything, goals and so on, and I was specifically guided to keep goals separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there, so I mentioned that there's this rubric for the entry plan from the new students, uh, new new superintendent's induction program. Mm -hmm. There's actually guidance on the goals on the Department of Education website, and I was encouraged mm -hmm. to follow that guidance. Those goals from the Department of Edu Education website actually encourage you to write goals that are based on the entry plan. It all seems a bit circular to me, right? But mm -hmm. I followed the guidance that I had. Um, the idea is that the entry plan be focused a lot on inquiry. You're just mm -hmm. examining, you're looking at things, you're asking questions and you're trying to learn. And then for the evaluation goals, those are where the committee uh, should, should judge my performance and should, should hold me accountable for whatever's in those goals. Similar right. to the entry plan, I'm happy to adjust the goals. Um, but but uh, um, specific to the question you asked, Ms. Ms. Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, around support for teachers, um, I, I, I firmly believe that, uh, that that the, the first and most, uh, the highest leverage activity we can indulge in in the school department is to support teachers in their professional growth. So that, that that's how we encourage teachers to um, be effective in the classroom and, and for our students to grow. And, and, and very much that's part of my plan. Um, it's referred to under um, part two, I believe it's, it's a, no, excuse me. I didn't get that right. I'm looking at my entry. I'm looking at your entry plan, by the way. I'm not looking at your goals right now. So this was know. under your core beliefs. You had five core beliefs. And what I was saying is potentially, I know that you would, you care about, you know, supporting the staff. And so I was thinking that that should be fall under one of your core beliefs as well, because it's not listed as such right now. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I will be happy to adjust that. Thank you. And then um, the other thing, what was it? Do, 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 do. Uh, so the other thing is in kind of the way and in, in, in I was trying to digest the way that it was written because I know that everybody has a different style and now that you're telling us kind of the guidance that you were given um, it says there so there are obviously some objectives in your entry plan that you as a person would like to uphold the district has and others um, that you probably would like to rethink um, I'm just curious as to as your thinking about the entry plan, was this a uh, collaborative or was this kind of just your thoughts that you were thinking about when you designed the entry plan? So um, it was both. I, I think it began, uh, I, I began by drafting it uh, myself, sharing it with my coach, sharing it with some uh, colleagues whose feedback I, um, I, I value. And I shared it with each of the cabinet members for their feedback. Okay. That's good because that leads to my my other question, which was about the data analysis, because a lot of it seems that it would be very singular. And I think obviously you have a breadth of experience in your cabinet. And so um, being able to like lean on your chiefs as far as getting their lens, all their lenses are going to be different. And that's going to allow for you to have insight about even how you're collecting the data, what type of data you need to to look for. And so I, I didn't notice notice that that was in there. So that's why I wanted to ask. Um, if that was part of your process as well. This is on page four um, towards the bottom. We have the data analysis kind of section. Right. So um, I think my response to that is, 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 is the following, that, that it's this curious um, uh, 
sort of conundrum about being, being a superintendent, and this has occurred with other superintendents as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to achieve anything. I'm not going to achieve any of this entry plan or my goals or anything else without the input of all the cabinet and all the principals and so forth, right? And so sometimes when you come to like the end of a year and the superintendent uh, maybe displays the um, the accomplishments of the school year and so on, they very seldom are like this. The superintendent went on out there and did that specifically him or herself. It's really that the superintendent has. Uh, orchestrated the, the 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 skills and and the the aptitudes of people in the cabinet and principals and so on to make this stuff happen in our district, and that's very much true of, of data analysis and 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 all the other aspects of my entry plan and my goals. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned in the goals, for example, um, air conditioning. Right? I don't know about air conditioning, but I, I believe we need to plan for that. Um, I mentioned mental health needs mm -hmm. because we've. But I, I'm, I'm very serious about these items, but I, and I hope to report back to you that we've made significant progress, but it won't be because Liam Skinner led each and every detail of that work. I certainly will, right? So, so, so I'm, being, I'm trying to be authentic with you and, 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 and acknowledge your point, but it will very much involve uh, at least all of the cabinet members and, and, and many others as well. Okay. Um, and then I'll just ask two more questions so that I'm not um, entirely monopolizing. Um, the the list of, of the data sor resources or sources, are those different than what we're using now or are they, are they the same? They're the same. Okay, okay. But, in, in other words, each of those each of those sources is available to me right now. Okay. They, they exist. Okay. And then the last question as far as your entry plan on the, on the page, on page five, um, it says um, you're looking towards, you have four, five, and six. On number five, it says, what are our biggest opportunities for growth? So by biggest opportunities for growth, are you looking at the ones that are timely? So the timely things that we need to grow, or are you looking at the things that are, I mean, I'm trying to think for lack of a better word, more cosmetic that might be more attractive to people to to kind of deal with, but aren't necessarily, they can be put off. They're not as timely. So um, I, I'm trying to, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the document myself. Can, I, can you refer me specifically? Yeah, to it is on page five. Okay. Um, so under the data analysis, we go. To, if you just flip to the next page, it's um, you have four, five, and six. And it says, so the first question is, what must we protect or sustain in our system? And then the next one says, what are our biggest opportunities for growth? Um, as part of your entry plan, I was just curious when, when you're saying that, like what are your thoughts surrounding that? coming into well, this no, new plan, are you thinking about things that are timely, like things, for example, I think about the schools that are falling apart, right, that they need our attention, our, our specific attention. Um, but there are some other things that could be, you know, more cosmetic, um, but they're not as timely. So that's kind of where I was trying to pick your brain as far as where what you're thinking um, in your entry plan. Maybe I shouldn't try to pick your brain because I saw the smile. <laughs> No, yeah, and for, for what it's worth, I, I I don't know that others on this uh, meeting are are enjoying it as much as I am, but but I really appreciate your attention to the detail of the plan. I I I find that 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 uh, that it, it it's um uh, it's it's very helpful, and and I appreciate your your attending to it. Um, I don't have a specific answer, but what I I, I haven't I I've now fingered where you're referring to where it says uh, I'm also going to try to determine our our biggest opportunities for growth. Mm -hmm. The entry plan, again, taking it from an inquiry standpoint, will be involving cabinet, will be involving community members, community groups, faith-based groups, and so on, parents uh, at, at schools, and so on. Um, and so it might be that we learn from some data or so, some survey that there's an, an, an opportunity for growth uh, with a particular curriculum, for example, right? And I might advocate for that. But but if I found out that um, you know that there there's some doors in a, in schools that are are not secure that well that might be more urgent and I would advocate for that ahead of the curriculum right I I don't know what the answer is today um, but I, I I also am committing in this plan to report back to the it's not once this is approved and once I'm off and running with this plan it's not just going to stay with me I intend to report back to the committee um, at each stage at, at what my findings are. Excellent. And then this is the last thing I'm going to say. I know that Minerva is leaving us. She's already retired. Um, in, in your 90 day plan, I didn't see who we're supposed to report our motions to. So if you could let us know that, that'd be also fantastic. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ms. Thompson. Any other members have comments or questions on the first two items? 
and also in a uh, hands up. And uh, we do have a few more uh, report from the superintendent. And all of this, we have received um, the documents. So if on each item, um, just a brief introduction, and then if we're going to see if any committee members have uh, comments or questions. The next one is on the school reopening report, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is one of the reports that um, Ms. Crocker Roberge has taken the lead on, and uh, she has produced the report. I'd like to refer to her and uh, give her an opportunity to, to review it and take any questions that the committee members have. Ms. Roberge? Thank you, Mr. Skinner and Mayor Chow. Um, we are in the thick of things, as you will, in terms of school reopening. There is a short runway ahead of us and a lot of important things to get done in order to be able to welcome kids back to uh, clean, fully staffed, um, and schools ready to go. So in service of that, we've been working on uh, six key areas. They include number one, administrative staffing, and you've already seen some of the products this evening of the, those efforts. Uh, the second is school-based personnel staffing, and this is to ensure that there is a qualified teacher uh, in every classroom, in every vacant position, along with the appropriate support staff and personnel, including paraprofessionals. The other areas we're working on are facilities preparation, and this is key as uh, uh, Superintendent Skinner just uh, remarked that things like a broken door that could pr pr pose a safety um, concern or whatnot. Um, the fourth area is technology deployment. We want to make sure all of our technology is ready to go on day one. Uh, the fifth is curriculum provisioning. And finally, the big one is transportation, um, along with uh, making sure our buildings are ready. We have to make sure kids can get to school. Um, so you've already been introduced to the principals, but we've hired a cadre of assistant principals to backfill some internal promotions um, and fill some, some uh, vacancies. So we're excited to welcome Daroth Yan to the Shaughnessy Elementary School as assistant principal. Uh, we will be welcoming an experienced assistant principal, Maureen ward -Nault, at the Riley Elementary School this year. Uh, the Lincoln Elementary School, we're welcoming Carrie Ann Driscoll, who is a returning teacher uh, prior to being an assistant principal, uh, was a longtime Lowell teacher and is coming back to the district in a new role. Uh, we have another promotion of an internal candidate, Victor Alves, who is a teacher at the Daly Middle School, who's stepping up to an assistant principal role there. Uh, the Bailey Elementary School is welcoming Alicia Silvestroni, who is a current literacy specialist who will be stepping up. So lots of internal promotions, as you can see here. And then at Pine Arts, the interim role uh, is going to Laurie Burnham, uh, who is a longtime teacher and administrator in the Lawrence Public Schools. We do have two key uh, administrative positions that are open at this, at this time, though. One is the associate head of schools at Lowell High School. Now, that position has been vacant, and they have gone through hiring processes. And at the end of the first series of that process did determine that there was a, an ideal candidate, um, but that did not come to fruition and th therefore it's been reposted. Um, and there has been a limited number of candidates for that key position. And the other one that is just ending its posting is the Early Childhood Center Coordinator. That was a newly approved position at the last committee meeting. So we are waiting out the process with that, um, but a, a screening committee is forming at this time. And there is a contingency plan in place to make sure that there is supervision um, and preparation to open the Cardinal O'Connell. Uh, other things that are happening are we welcomed over 70 teachers last week at New Teacher Academy over at uh, O'Leary Library in UMass Lowell. This week, there's been a major focus on paraprofessional hiring. We've added lots of programming this year, additional substantially separate programs, all of which come with a significant number of paraprofessionals. And through site-based budgeting, we also had schools uh, uh, increase the number of paraprofessional positions to provide direct support to classroom teachers in different ways. Um, so we had a large number of vacancies, about 64 paraprofessional vacancies as of the end of last week. Um, so the focus this week has been on hiring for paraprofessionals. Um, and at last count, we've been able to cut that number down to about 25. Um, so we are making progress. And uh, uh, we had a huge hiring event last night that was wildly successful. It yielded us 28 hires for those vacant positions in just a two hour window of time. So that was a tremendous effort by the Human Resources Department to pull that off on short notice. 
This coming week, we're going to focus on tutor hiring and continuing to uh, fill those hard to fill positions. And there are some. The teacher shortage is very real. And I don't don't want to um, paint any picture. One thing you'll find about me is that I'm very transparent. Um, and, and we do have about 25 teaching positions currently that principals are working to fill. Um, math and science in grades five all the way through grade 12 are posing a particular challenge right now. And you may have seen a lot of um, activity on social media through the Low Public School social media site. Um, we're posting on Indeed. Uh, Dr. Hall and his office are, are leaving no stone unturned to get us candidates. Um, into the hands of the principals who are the hiring managers for their school. Um, ELA and ESL in grades 5 to 12 continue to be a bit challenging, as well as special education at all levels. Um, and so uh, Dr. Hall's office has been working closely with our union partners um, and uh, within, like I said, all the resources of their department to get to cast a wide net um, and continue to attract good candidates for these positions. Um, in terms of facilities preparation, uh, we are in the final push. The goal has been to have every school and classroom accessible starting on Monday. We know that there are lots of staff members that like to come in and get their classrooms set up. Um, and we're, despite having program at every single school for summer programming this year. Um, we are very much on track for that to happen. We do have a few classrooms at schools that ran programming into mid-August um, that won't be ready by Monday, um, but there's a plan in place to support those schools with either high needs in terms of a short runway for cleaning or who may be down a custodian for any reason. Um, and Dr. Hall also is um, actively monitoring all of those areas. We had some capital projects again uh, at, that affected the exterior uh, areas of some of our school. These are all improvements. They're great things to have. We have walkways at the Moody and the Cardinal that will be on track completion at the start of the school year, parking lots and driveway repaving over at Sullivan, Riley and Pine Arts. Um, and everything is on track to have those projects completed for reopening. Um, in addition, we're working on some elevator repair concerns um, at particularly at the Robinson Middle School right now and ensuring there's a contract in place for that work to be done and done before the start of the school year. And also an electrical panel over at the Merkland School that has had some work done on it and that also needs to be ready to start the school year. Uh, Chief Academic Officer uh, Robin Desmond oversees technology and her department has done a phenomenal job of ensuring that there are tickets, new staff accounts, devices, everything soup to nuts ready to go. The technology department has been turning out um, candidates, new candidates and getting laptops and accounts into their hands at a record pace. And all of the curriculum maps and materials uh, have been provided or are on their way to schools. And then transportation, I think you started seeing some messaging also on the Facebook page recently. Additional messaging will be coming out um, via Connected and through all of our communication channels. But K to four bus passes are due to be po uh, mailed out on August 23rd. The middle school bus lookup tool will be live and updated by 4 p.m. on the 22nd. Um, the reminder to those watching in the public is that the lunch ID is the um, search name and it's uh, the eight digit birth date. You need to look up your child's bus pass. Um, when the kids log into their devices, they use their six digit birth date. So they're very accustomed to putting in their student ID and then their six digit birth date. But for the bus lookup tool, they've got to use the entire four digit um, year of birth. Um, and we are projecting from uh, Mr. Dakota's office that uh, we're looking at level service funding in terms of um, our level service in terms of providing the number of buses, number of routes, et cetera, as there were last year. Um, so we're on track for a great year ahead. We're working through some of those last facilities issues and hiring issues um, so that we'll be fully staffed and ready to go for day one. Love to answer any questions from the committee. Thank you, Ms. Ulbach. Any comments or questions from any of the members? I don't see um, any hands up. Uh, great report, Ms. Ulbach. We'll go to the next report on the uh, on the agenda. The next one is the Family Resource Center update. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are aware that the, the, the committee's uh, desire for the Family Resource Center registrations to go very smoothly. We're also very cognizant of the, uh, the usual rush that we face at this time of the year between now and mid-September. Um, 
Ms. Phillips, our uh, Chief Equity Officer, has been very busy along with the Director of the Family Resource Center providing for um, the, the, the coming rush that we have. And, and Ms. Phillips may, has an update for you. Ms. Phillips, please. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor, school committee members. So I provided you with a memo um, on important updates happening at the Family Resource Center. Um, you'll recall that in February, we did introduce a new coordinator of the Family Resource Center, um, Abisola Ogunseye, and she has been working with her team um, on implementing this school assignment, school registration process um, for her first time, as well as with a relatively new team. Um, in order to support the volume of, of um, school assignment applications coming in, um, the Family Resource Center has extended its hours um, beginning next week, 4 to 6 p.m. This is in addition to um, an appointment system where families who can't meet that timeline um, can meet with with um, a family liaison to support their needs. Um, so that'll be beginning August 21st through the first week of school. Um, additionally, there will be two Saturday sessions on this upcoming Saturday, as well as the Saturday right before the start of the school year. Um, we are also setting up a temporary call center. Um, we're very well aware that the volume of calls increases to the Family Resource Center, not only for school assignment, but also including transportation, school schedules, um, immunization support, any type of phone call related to school reopening um, often comes to the Family Resource Center as a parent's first point of contact. And um, I also wanted to mention that we, in addition to school assignments, we have received close to 500 school transfer requests. Um, transfers are approved per the policy, at least one transfer per year, uh, but it is based on space being available in a grade or a school. We did send a communication to the 500, almost 500 applicants, letting them know that we will inform families who have been approved of a transfer um, via email um, and and letter. However, if families are not approved of a transfer, um, they should anticipate um, going to their um, previous school or their feeder pattern um, middle school at the start of the school year. I also wanted to mention that um, we do currently have many students who have not received medical clearance to, to attend school. Uh, we currently have um, about 200 students who that is the final piece waiting for their school assignment. Um, in order to address these numbers of students, we have partnered with the Lowell Community Health Center to offer um, two immunization clinics. Um, one took place this past um, Saturday. The next one is on August 26th. However, families do need an appointment in order to go because there are only 90 slots for each of these immunization clinics. We're looking at whether they'll be able to offer clinics after the school year begins. Um, I also received a communication today from um, Ms. Beth Moffitt that the, um, I think the Lowell General Immunization Clinic has also extended um, days and hours to address the numbers of students needing to be medically cleared. We are planning to um, assign students to their schools, um, you know, in the next coming, in the upcoming days, even though they have not received medical clearance. However, we will work with schools um, to ensure that students are not attending school until they receive the, um, the medical clearance. However, we wanna make sure that, that families do know where their children are going uh, we want to make sure that they're able to request transportation so that at the point that they are cleared, they're able to um, begin school right away. So those are the updates that I wanted to highlight, but I'm happy to answer any additional questions um, the school committee members may have. 
Thank you, Ms. Phillips, for that detailed report, report and update. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Ms. Mon? Thank you very much. I just have a couple quick ones, um, Ms. Phillips. Could you, uh, so it's 200 is the number right now of students who are awaiting vaccination confirmation? That That is correct. And we, we are processing 200 more students. And I'm confident that in that additional 200 students, mm -hmm. we're gonna have students who aren't cleared. Sure, okay. So would it be possible, I, and again, you know, this is just something we track, you know, obviously. Um, so at our next meeting, then we'll get an, I'm assuming we'll get another update. So we'll see exactly where we're at. I mean, I do think that with, um, you know, obviously the Lowell Community Health Center and, and Lowell General are great partners. It's great that they're extending this uh, opportunities for families. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that when we when we get our next report, we'll we'll see that the numbers have gone down despite the increased number of kids coming through the door. So thank you very much for the update. Ms. Jordan? Uh, thank you. I, I'm, my concerns are on a similar track. As uh, this committee knows, we've had a couple of years of really extraordinarily high numbers of students still not able to attend school, um, even as late as into October. And where school is just two weeks away, I'm just trying to drill down to find out where the those students are coming from. When you talk about that for the month of August, you had um, 400 walk-ins. So those are people registering for the first time or are they uh, registering to go to, you know, they're brand new to the low school system, 400 new people in August. Is that correct? Um, so it's, it's a combination of new students to the district um, families also walk in to fill out their transportation forms online. So a lot of families are using our computers in the Family Resource Center. We also provide um, job permits for um, for students. So those are usually the, the three largest reasons someone walks into the Family Resource Center. Got it. So that 400 is not all new entering students. So the 200 families that we know of, and that number might grow as you're addressing the walk-ins that came in in August, those 200 uh, new students, are they pre-K and kindergarten students primarily? Because I would think a student, unless they're a, com a newcomer to the country, if they've been in another school district, all their immunization records and would be have been verified prior to coming to Lowell, right? So of the 200, how many of them are pre-K and kindergarten first-time enrollers? Even just pre-K are first-time enrollers. Kindergarten, if they've been with us for pre-K, it wouldn't be their first time. Mm -hmm. So um, we have 126 kindergarten or incoming um, kindergarten students. And my understanding is that there are new immunizations between pre-K and kindergarten. Um, or it may be between four years old and five years old that you need to get an additional um, additional shots. So we do have 126K and then the remaining um, 74 are other grades. Other grades, but probably pre-K? Um, I, I can't say if it's pre-K, um, but well, no, it's not kindergarten. Okay. So the reason I'm asking is, you know, we've done this, uh, and this has all been in the last few years that we changed the the registration process and had these multiple, um, uh, I forget what you call them, lotteries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right up until, when was the last one? The beginning of August? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have had meetings where we have the nurses come forward and say it's just too difficult for us to process all these at the end of the summer. But when many of them are off there, most of them are off the summer. They wanted to go back to the earlier registration time. So I'm, I'm trying to dig down and see if we we gave another year of this late registration through the summer thing. And I, I need to know, like, the data to support that whether that is still a problem for us uh, because we're scrambling. And I think it's wonderful that the community health center and that the Lowell General are gonna provide these uh, services because I know right now to get a doctor's appointment, you can be waiting months and to have a child out of school 
even two days to miss the beginning of school, uh, it's not great. So if for the next meeting, if we could get a more specific on how many of these people that uh, these ch children that don't have the immunizations were people coming in later on in the summer that maybe could be avoided by going back to, you know, the policy of trying to get everybody registered in the, in the late spring, like we used to do, that would be very helpful for me if we could have that data. And then the only thing I want, the other thing I want to mention, I think it's great you're doing Saturdays. We had been asking, I know I've had this motion on for a couple of years to extend the hours at the Family Resource Center anyway, to have one night for our families who just can't get there. Uh, before five o'clock because of work commitments. So I'm wondering, are these extended hours just, have we gone back to that late Thursday that we used to have, or are we just doing this as a temporary this time of year? So um, to respond to your first question, I don't believe our challenge right now is reading the immunization cards. It's actually completing the shots. So in prior years, we did have challenges reading the immunization cards and 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 knowing who was in compliance or non-compliance. Right now it's a matter of of the families actually being able to get those those appointments. So so we're trying to address that with the immunization clinics. So that's something we can reflect on and see how we can do that differently next year. But I'll still continue to look at the data and see what I can provide. And, and to that point, I, I think that's great, you know, to be able to make that distinguishing mm -hmm. factor, whether it's having the information correctly, being able to read it, or whether it's getting the shot. But either way, the sooner we get the information, the sooner families know you need to do this, this, and this, it mm -hmm. gives us more flexibility in getting the shots. I don't want to get to a situation where we have, you know, a bunch of students who aren't able to attend school because they, they don't have their shots. That That's what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, but go ahead, what was the, the second part about the hours? Yeah, the second part is around the hours. Um, we do offer appointments um, and our family liaisons have, have supported families in the past at different hours whenever they need the support. We can look at an extended evening hour, you know, and collect the data on our families coming on that you know, on that additional hour, um, that is something that um, would be overtime for our staff, or it would be. It wasn't before. I'm not sure why it would be. We know. we did this before, and it was uh, Miss Martin. Yeah, do you it, recall that? Absolutely, it was just the way the schedules were built, so they were. And, that, and that, I mean, I've been asking for that and getting votes for it. The committee, as a whole, the majority wanted to go back to that flexible schedule that we had and it was it was cost neutral because the pet, if you were gonna stay that Thursday, you were gonna stay uh, late, you got to come in late that morning. That was how it was, I, I think if I recall correctly. Yeah. But that's what, I mean, we had motions to move forward with doing that. Um, so we're not doing that. This is just a, right now, a couple so of extra days. Yeah, so we're, we're doing appointments upon request. So there's no barrier to an evening um, you know, to evening service. However, we can discuss, you know, an extended day. Um, we can track the data to see if families are using that day. Um, but right now, our liaisons are um, on flex schedules. They're able to support families um, different times of the evening um, based on family need. Thank you. So I look forward to getting, as Ms. Martin said, the follow-up report that'll, you know, drill down a little bit more on terms of those numbers of students that are were not able to start on the first day because of the immunization records. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Chun? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, um, my question is, um, I'm assuming they're on the same, um, not, for me, it's not about vaccination, but um, I have been asked by parents, um, they have not received from the high school level, um, new entry to our district and they have not received their child, um, uh, my goodness, class list. Um, is there a direct line that I can, um, request to send call the high school. Them email? I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Phillips, was that a question directed to Ms. Phillips? 
Uh, yes. Or um, Mr. Skinner's, that's fine too. Um, sure, how certainly. can parents reach out to any of our administration in terms of um, class uh, um, class list for um, freshmen? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, it, it, first of all, if it's Freshman Academy, they're welcome to reach out directly to the high school. Um, if uh, if that's not satisfied, if it's about enrollment or registration, they can reach out to um, Family Resource Center. At any rate, Ms. Chun, if you're aware of somebody who's sought information and having a hard time getting it, I'd like to know. And, and please feel free to refer them to the superintendent's office. I'll be happy to help them. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Lay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, history have shown that every uh, uh, August and September, we have very high number of uh, enrollments. And I expect that this year may be the same. And I know the, um, Ms. Phillips, the Family Resource Centers uh, have a new leadership and also uh, maybe a brand new team. So, um, just wanna say that uh, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to us uh, if you feel overwhelmed or something need to be done. Um, I have confidence that you know what to do. I uh, just wanna uh, toss it out so that uh, that you know that we, we're here to uh, to help you assist uh, so that students can, uh, can uh, go to school on time. Thank you. Mr. Lay, I'd like to personally thank you for the offer. It's very generous of you. And uh, in that spirit, you should know that the different departments at central office are working collaboratively um, on, on, on particular issues for, for one particular department. Many departments can collaborate. And that's the case with Family uh, Resource Center. The, 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 the rush that we'll face at Family Resource Center is not only uh, the responsibility of Ms. Phillips' office, but all of us. And we're tackling it as a collaborative uh, issue this year, uh, but, but we'll be happy to reach out to you as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Toskina. Uh, Ms. Dory, uh, actually, um, I, I'm gonna have Ms. Thompson because she hasn't spoken yet. Uh, Ms. Thompson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thank you, Ms. Phillips. I've actually been hearing good things about what's been going on. Um, so that's uh, um, amazing. Um, quick couple, I guess, quick questions. So first of all, as far as who you're seeing coming in most recently, what is the language that you're seeing most recently? I'm kind of curious about that. And um, also of the, of the remaining people that are, um, are looking to get vaccinations or what have you, are they a specific um, demographic that you're seeing? Like, is it a specific country of people that are coming in or specific demographic? I know you spoke to a lot of them being the kindergarten age, but I was just curious about those two things. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Ms. Thompson. So we are continuing to um, receive a lot of families um, who are Portuguese speaking families, um, Spanish speaking families, um, we are also receiving um, many Haitian students, which is which is different this year. Um, and I believe we're also receiving um, students from Ecuador and Guatemala. I can't say um, at this moment who is having trouble with with immunizations, but that's something that I can um, definitely look more closely into. Thank you. Ms. Uh, thank you, Ron. Just one more quick qu follow-up question. Um, I know we have a number of students that are waiting for the immunization stuff to go through. How many students um, do not have assigned schools yet? So the students who have not received medical clearance today has not been assigned. However, because we're about a week and a half out of school, um, we intend to start assigning students, but not before talking with, um, with our schools and school leaders so that they can plan and make sure that, um, that we have a system in place for assigning non-compliant students um, and ensuring that they're not going to come to school. So that number was 200. So we have 200 students who haven't been assigned. All the other students, K to 12, have their school assignments then, unless they have some 
uh, medical documentation that needs to be completed. Is that what you're saying? It's only the 200 without well, the documentation. Yes, anyone with a complete anyone with a complete file is assigned. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And if I could mention that's, you know, I don't know what might have happened yesterday or today, but we are up to date. If your file is complete, we are up to date. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Phillips. And uh, Ms. Dory, I, I still see your the yellow hand uh, popped up. So, all right. So, well, thank you. And we'll go to the, uh, the next report. And uh, we do have a few more reports uh, to follow. So maybe just, again, we obviously all the documents in the file already, and we just get a, a brief summary from the uh, the, the report who um, the person who wrote the report, and then we just go straight to the, the committee members for comments and questions. Uh, the next one is on the August Leadership Academy report, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we could spend quite a long time on this, but we we won't. I, I understand the the the, uh, the the need to that discretion with time. Um, I'd like to just say that uh, this event that you received a report on uh, is a really important one for us because it has to do with orienting and uh, training our leaders as we go into a new school year. Traditionally, it's a three day event, and that's the case this year. This year, Miss um, Desmond, Miss Phillips, and Miss Crocker. Uh, worked through co collaboratively with um, a facilitator, a consultant from a group called Attuned to plan the events. You have a report that was provided to you by um, Ms. Crocker Roberge uh, that outlines the various agenda items for the, the three days. And I'll stop there and take any questions that members might have. Any comments or questions by the, any of the committee members? Uh, I don't see any hands up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bush, for the, for the report. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know if my camera can pick it up. It is a, a very thick and detailed report, so there's a lot of work that I uh, have gone into this um, by, by everyone. So thank you for that. Uh, if there are no comments or, or questions on this report, we'll go to the next report, uh, which is on the low high the update on low high school scholarships. Mr. Superintendent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. In our last meeting, I believe it was uh, July 19th, Ms. Thompson uh, had some on so, some questions of uh, items that were unfulfilled in terms of Lowell High School scholarships. I spoke with Mr. Fiato about that, and he produced a memo that you received in your packet. Um, so I, I could take questions on that. Um, on behalf of Ms. Thompson, I also want to mention we have a report of motions a little bit further on in our meeting. Um, and uh, I noticed that there are also two motions uh, still pending that ha have to do with scholarship items. So it is possible, despite the efforts of Mr. Fiato to produce that uh, document that you've received, that there are still questions uh, about scholarships. And so I'm happy to sort of take that all together if, if that uh, suits you or take any questions. Any comments or questions uh, for now for the scholarship section? I don't see any hands up. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Superintendent, for uh, that quick report. Uh, the next items, uh, the next two items uh, on the, uh, these are the motion response. 8.7 is the response to motion 10 CFO of 517.23 by Ms. Doherty regarding community schools. Ms. Doherty. Sorry. Um I thank you for that update. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lee. No other comments by any of the members. We'll go, we take on the next motion uh, response. This is a vocal response to the motion by Mr. Lay regarding school crosswalks. Uh, any further comments, Mr. Lay? No, Mr. Mayor. If, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Right. Um, go, go ahead, Mr. Skinner. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lay's motion called for um, crosswalks to be repainted and so on before the start of school. Um, as of Friday, when the packet was put together, I didn't have sufficient detail to put together a memo on that. But so, I, and that's why I included a verbal response. 
Since that time, I do have information, Mr. Lay, uh, that you may be interested in. Uh, the eight schools are having new um, ADA compliant sidewalks and ramps. The crosswalks that are adjacent to those sidewalks will be completed by the D DPW using ADA funds uh, before school starts. ADA referring to Americans with Disabilities Act. So that's eight schools. Um, overall, a thousand crosswalks are being painted throughout the city uh, by the end of August. They're a little bit behind due to the weather conditions over the summer, a lot of wet weather. Um, parking lot paving is going on at three schools um, and their remaining schools, I've been assured, will be lined by the start of school pending weather. And uh, so, so that's an update, Mr. Lay, that, that, that you're, um, I, I should also mention that uh, Mr. Lay's uh, motion asked for the superintendent to work with the city, because obviously the city is responsible for this work. I found the city manager and the city uh, officials to be very cooperative and, and, and very um, uh, worked very well with us uh, on this particular motion. And I think, Mr. Lay, it's, uh, your, your wishes have been satisfied to date. Thank you, Mr. Skinner. Appreciate it, Superintendent. Thank you. No other comments or questions on this. We're now going to go to the next one. Um, 8.9, uh, the uh, report on motions. Mr. Superintendent. Uh, Ms. Mon, uh, yeah, you, you had something on the previous one or on this current one? On this one. The, oh. the superintendent can start. <laughs> sure. okay, thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. So, um, there is a, a, a standing agreement that, that the report of motions is reported out to the committee, I think once per quarter. I don't think it was quite uh, time for it to be introduced just yet, but I asked for it to be on tonight's agenda because as a new, new uh, interim superintendent, I understand that there's sometimes been a practice where the committee will consider all old motions. So I'm not, I'm not specifically asking for you to dismiss all the old motions, but I wonder if the committee might take it under consideration, which of the old motions, it, it, I, I, I'm taking responses to motions is just a really serious responsibility of mine that I'm going to take very seriously on the behalf of the committee members responding to each one of your motion requests. Uh, but, but, but some of them, as I reviewed them, and before I get into it, with, you know, responding to them with vigor and, and, and issuing um, uh, directives that we do so, um, I wanted you to consider, so one of them, for instance, is two years old, and others are more than a year old. Uh, it, it boils down to, would the committee like me to go right ahead and provide responses to each of the outstanding motions, or might we consider some sort of a, a, um, a collapse or, 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 or re refresh? Uh, I'm going to go to Ms. Mon. So the short answer is yes. Um, we need to we need to get this report under control. I've gone through. I have eight motions that can be eliminated off the bat that are my own. I do think that each member um, would be able to go through and kind of eliminate the ones that have been responded to that we've moved past. Um, and I think that would really get us. You know, we're at thirty two pages right now. I that, that seems like a bit much. So, I mean, what I would recommend, uh, Superintendent Skinner, would be, I'm happy to email to you the the eight that I'm that I think should be taken off that I'm responsible for. If every other member could maybe do that, um, and I would also, and I would make this in the form of a motion. I only saw a couple, but I, I think any motions that are there from previous terms from members who are no longer on the committee um, should just be eliminated. Uh, if it's something of interest that a current committee member has, they can make a new motion and start the, the process all over again. Um, but I think just to kind of clean this up, I mean, this was meant to be a working document that kind of kept us all honest and it's just kind of grown out of control. So I applaud your efforts to try and prune it down. Okay, well, well let's go start. Well, uh, a motion of floor by Ms. Mon to eliminate all the motions that were requested by former members, uh, basically members who are not currently on the school committee to be eliminated. Second by, I'm sure um, Madam Secretary could word it better, uh, but we get the gist of it. Um, second by Ms. Doherty. Um, all in favor say aye. Opposing aye. no, ayes have it. Aye. It's carried. Um, I know that Mr. Lay also wants to speak on this uh, motion report, Mr. Lay. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On top of that, I've seen some uh, motions that are completed and they've been completed a while ago. So I don't know if we uh, can eliminate some of those two. I don't know if there's a rule, how many months you want to uh, have it on there bef before you could take it out. But I've seen a lot of them uh, are completed and still on there. Absolutely. I think anything that's completed should go. Uh, Ms. Dorian? Uh, thank you, Ron. I want to say um, I definitely agree with that. If, if if you want, and if the superintendent would be more comfortable with an email from each of us saying which ones of our completed motions we're fine with removing, um, I know in the past sometimes it would say completed, and it hadn't been completed fully or as, as the committee member expected. So that would be in line with Miss Martin had said earlier about an email doing that. Uh, one of the things I'd like to highlight is motions that have been long-standing and not acted on uh, and the one that jumps right out at me because we just had that conversation uh, is number seven the family resource center hours where i had that motion back in september of 22 so a year ago asking to return to their rotation rotating basis hours um, i had a motion i think it it's going on three years now about a mental health audit uh, that never was fulfilled uh, these And I can go through this and include it in the email, but I just for tonight, um, I thought I'd like to express, you know, those are ones that come right to mind that I had um, that were not fulfilled. So, uh, Ms. Darty, I appreciate your comment, and uh, I appreciate all the comments made. Um, Ms. Martin, I think, it, it, uh, maybe used the phrase cleaning it up. Uh, I, I think I'd like to take the opportunity to have each member review their own and, and nobody take away your motion. Uh, but 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 um, but whichever ones remain will be taken seriously and will be responded to promptly. Okay, thank you. No other comments or questions by any of the members. Um, I, I just want to add to that, uh, we're on the right track. Uh, thank you for your concern, Mr. Skinner, and bring up forefront and uh, Ms. Mon's uh, comment. Um, there'll be a lot to take it, and then there are going to be many uh, more new motions. So and I think the, the upcoming motion, the current motions and the future motions are probably um, most relevant to what's going on now. Um, so I may be in addition to um, the motion, your current motions or the motions that in the past that you made that um, you want to uh, take out of the uh, report, that'd be great but also maybe highlight uh, a few motions that are still really uh, important to you that uh, you feel still be re relevant and should be addressed. Uh, maybe highlight those so that way the superintendent could address those uh, motions. And of course, even though motions are made in the past and if uh, you feel that uh, they are important to you, um, there's no reason why you cannot make them as a new motion again uh, to be presented. So, I mean, all these things, we're working together to make sure the motions and issues are, are relevant um, for the school year. Um, so thank you for that, uh, Mr. Superintendent. Um, no other comments or questions, we'll go to, um, I think that we, that, that completes all the report. Now I need a motion to accept the report from the superintendent 8.1 through 8.9 as report. Mr. Program. Mayor, excuse me, please. I believe there's one more. It's a standard report of home education provided by Ms. Desmond, number uh, 8.10. 8. We'll take that on the, on the next one. We're now we're just dealing with 8.1 through 8.9. That's a separate item um, uh, following that. I see it on my agenda. Um, so we just need a, uh, a motion to accept the points of poor progress by Ms. Dory, second by Mr. Lay on famous aye, opposed say no. Aye. Motion is carried. Um, so the next line item is 8.10, which is the home education. Mr. Superintendent. Understood, excuse me. Um, thank you. I believe it's a standard uh, periodic report that Ms. Desmond put together. Um, if the committee members have any questions, uh, you may put them to Ms. Desmond. Any comments or questions on the home education by any of the members? I don't see Motion it. to accept. Was that by, I couldn't see who it was. Stacy. Uh, by Ms. Thompson, second by Ms. Chun. Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call please. Ms. Doherty. Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Mr. Rossi? She's mute. She might be answering, but she's mute. Dr. Hawkins, 
Can you unmute Mr. Rossi? It's okay, but uh, okay. Do we have, do we have a majority? We'll say six days, one absent. Okay. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, the next section of the new businesses, uh, we'll start with 9.1, Long High School Graduation Policy Change uh, Request. Um, is this going to go to the uh, policy subcommittee? Uh, Mr. Superintendent, any, any comments on this? Um, I, I don't know whether it goes to the policy subcommittee. It's certainly a possibility, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'll take the wishes of the committee on it. I also have... Um, Ms. Desmond prepared to speak, and she has also arranged for uh, Ms. Camping to be present, who um, has put together much of the information that might be of interest to the committee. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this, uh, Ms. Mon, go ahead. I would just say, and I, and I know we've already sent something to the policy subcommittee, and I don't even know if I'm on it, so I'm sorry if I'm giving other people stuff. Um, <laughs> But I do think if we're going to get into this, I'd, I'd rather not have the conversation here, then have it in policy, then bring it back to have it here. And I apologize. I'm looking particularly at you, Lauren, that you spent your whole night here. I apologize for that. Um, but I, I think it is a policy that needs to be kind of presented and, and discussed before we move forward. One for motion by Ms. Mon to refer this to the policy subcommittee, second by Ms. Doherty. On favor, say aye, opposed, say no, the aye, silent. Motion is carried. Uh, the next line item is the low. Public Schools Handbook update. Mr. Skinner, with the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, most of the handbook updates this time are uh, date changes and so forth that are uh, standard, just uh, converting from one school year to another. Um, Ms. Phillips has provided you with, with the handbook memo to describe the changes that, that are being sought. Um, Ms. Phillips is available to take any questions members have. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Just that this was a great way to present it, and I appreciated it. Thank you very much. Getting the kind of executive summary at the front with all the actual changes was very welcome. Thank you. Ms. Thompson? Um, just one thing I noted, under the student procedure matters section, there wasn't anything about the dashboard. And so um, if we could have something, so I didn't see, and maybe I missed it because it is a little bit of a thick document. <laughs> so I, might, I may have missed it. Um, but I didn't see anything about um, the bullying, discrimination, racism dashboard so that parents could know, uh, you know how to access it and uh, the procedure for accountability purposes. So it might be somewhere else, but I think that it should also live there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a note of that, uh, Mr. Superintendent and Ms. Phillips. Yes. Any other comments or questions on this line item? I don't see any hands up. Uh, I need a motion to approve the Lowell Public Schools Handbook update by Mr. Lay, second by Ms. Wong. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? The Mr. Next... Rossi? Yes. Seven yes. The next line item is the budget transfer in the mm -hmm. amount of $64,379. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. I understand that this is a relatively standard matter. Schools have a, the uh, purview to move items between different light items within a school budget. Um, in this case, it's a new principal, Mr. McCreven, coming to the uh, Shaughnessy School and uh, deciding to, to have some different priorities. And uh, he's worked with Ms. Turner to put together the memo that you received. Ms. Turner is available to take any further questions you have. Any comments or questions for the superintendent or Ms. Turner? I don't see any. Approved. Was approved by Mr. Lay, second by Ms. Chun. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Ms. Chow? Yes. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Mr. Rossi? Madam Secretary, do they have a majority to pass? Yes. Six shades, one absent. Okay. 
The next line item is 9.4, uh, the low high school athletics, rule 53 uh, wave request. We are taking that item in the beginning. Uh, we now go to item section 10, convention conference request. When once out of state and overnight travel request, low high school choir to travel to <laughs> Ohio. Any comments or questions by any of the committee members? I don't see any hands up. Need a motion to approve the convention conference. A by quick question, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lay, did you uh, have a question or comment? Uh, a comment. Uh, is that for going to be like forty thousand dollars? Because a hundred students, uh, four hundred dollars each. Mr. Superintendent, I'm trying to see which uh, where, where Mr. Lay is referring to. Are you referring, Mr. Lay, to the document that Mr. Fiato provided that's linked on the agenda? Um, let yeah. me see. It's four hundred each. Each student pays for themselves. And that's, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Uh, yes, it is from Mr. Seattle uh, that um, gonna cost $400 and a total of 100 students, nine adults. So gonna be yeah, at least $40,000. And I wonder if that comes up, come out of uh, all of them. Come, I know it says some of them come from fundraising and and individuals, but it doesn't say that no cost to the school. That's correct. Mr. Lay, you make a good point. Uh, Ms. Ms. Desmond, I think, has some more information to share. Ms. Desmond? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Skinner. Yes, the, um, the trip will be paid by students and through fundraising, um, Mr. Lay. The only cost that would be to the school department potentially would be the cost to cover uh, the teachers who were attending uh, the chaperones, um, the sub coverage uh, for that, and that would be absorbed by the school professional development budget. Just add, want to add the comment that 100 students, that's a lot of students going on the trip. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Desmond. Thank you. Okay, that motion was moved to approve it by Ms. Thompson, um, second by Ms. Morton. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Ms. Toon? Yes. Ms. Del Rossi? Ms. Del Rossi? Six shades, one absent. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We, um, that completes the meeting uh, for tonight. Before we take a motion to adjourn, any announcement by any of the members? Um, just a, a quick announcement. Uh, this weekend, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, one of the biggest events that we have in the city is the Low Southeast Asian Water Festival. I encourage everyone um, to come and enjoy the festivities. Um, there'll be uh, Many, many uh, people from around the country uh, will be visiting more this weekend. Uh, with that said, I need a motion to adjourn by- Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, are we going to executive session or two or no? Uh, yes, we are. That's, that's a separate meeting. Um, but you brought it up, um, you know, after this meeting, we'll take a, a five minutes break. It's 9.18, let's say 9.20. And we'll sign on, I believe it's the same link um, to the exact session, but let's get it's, it's a different link, Mia Chow. A different link? Yeah, it's a different link. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out uh, after we adjourn from, from this meeting. Um, need a motion to adjourn. Was it by Ms. Thompson? Second by Ms. Doherty. On the favor's aye, I say no, I have it. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this meeting, uh, both on Zoom and from home. Thank you. Thank you. What link are we going in? It's in your calendar. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dominic, you can get it on the executive session agenda.